Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be discussing the spiritual um, shift and how many of you guys have been experiencing that and a lot of other people are experiencing it but they don't know what they're experiencing. So we're going to talk about how to transmute those energies and all that comes with a spiritual shift. Um, some people may feel like um, you know, something is off with them for the last few years. So we're going to get into that. I know I see a lot of YouTubers who are experiencing such things and they don't know what's happening to them. So I'm going to help them out if they find this video. So how y'all doing? I'm going to let a few people get up in here. So uh, let me see. Um, let me see a one for anyone who has felt strange or been experiencing some of these issues, such as feeling spiritually attacked, feeling paranoid, anxiety, um, strange, you know, strange, suspicious, you know, types of people and all these kind of things. Y'all put a one, let me see so I can know if I have some of you guys in here so that you guys can relate. And like I said, I've watched a lot of YouTubers experience this and they have no idea what's happening to them. So either they run to get mental health or they turn to religion or Jesus or whoever, you know, whatever religion or spiritual, uh, you know, path that they're on. They try to turn to that thinking that it's going to help or stop it. But I'm going to tell you guys what is really happening. So. It's a mass awakening, as we have already said, and a lot of people don't know that it's literally an, a self, a form of initiation into the next level, into the goddess or godhood, okay? And when you are able to transmute and rise above that, um, all those issues on your own as a alchemist, which is why we're saying transmute, because that's an alchemy term. If you're able to um, transmute all of that without seeking medical help or, um, you know, turning back to, you know, the religion and worshiping something, you literally pass the initiation into your own divinity. And so a lot of people may feel spiritually attacked. A lot of people may be scared, experiencing weird things from people, seeing, you know, weird stuff. But at the same time, once you learn how to transmute it, it's, it starts becoming a joke. Like literally you will be laughing at the funny things that um, are trying to uh, impede you in some way. And then it'll just dissipate. Okay. So I see a lot of people going through it. And I want to help them because they're, I can see that they're panicking and you, there's no need to panic. You have to have self-actualization, which means you have to believe that you are divine and you are a God or goddess. Okay. If you don't come to that realization, you will be forced by yourself no one else, but by yourself, you will be forced by yourself to go back into the human frequency. Okay. So that's what a lot of people do. They are afraid and they don't know what else to do. So they go run back to religion, which is okay. I don't want to be this God or goddess or div divine person. So I have to run back to religion and have something above me or have something else to worship. The people don't that don't run back, they, you know, they graduate into their God and goddesshood. So if y'all are going through that, if you like having something over you, or if you like being human and not divine, then you're probably going to have, you know, more fears. And therefore, you're going to have to find a way to, to um, put it all together for it to make sense to you. So a lot of people think, oh my gosh, God is punishing me or, you know, I'm being spiritually attacked by demons and all this kind of stuff. That's, that's yourself struggling to shift out of human, human into divine. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to say it again. 
That is yourself struggling from your human self to get to your divine self. Okay. If you can't do it, you go back down, you go back to a, a normal frequency, but you live in a lot of fear and you, and you feel like you have to pray and worship, you know, a God and that you have no control over your own destiny. Okay. So either you in or you out. So you're literally having to deal with all of these things as a God or goddess, not as a human. So you're presented with issues and problems that you must solve yourself mentally, spiritually, and physically so that you can move on, okay? Because everyone has probably experienced someone going through it or is going through it themselves. Um, people, you may, you may trust less people. You may feel, you know, I don't trust that person because they're saying strange things that are very triggering. And you know what that is? That is your intuition telling you this person may not have everything in your favor. You know, uh, this person may not need to, need to be trusted as much as you trust them. Not that you shouldn't trust them at all, but not as much as you trust them, especially if they're close to you. Um, if they're a stranger or someone you don't know and they're kind of suspicious, then that's also an alert to you that this person may not have the best intentions for you. And it's not a feeling of like being psychic. It's a feeling like I'm very suspicious of you. Why are you saying those things? Hmm. You know, because they're, you're picking up on their frequency and you're able to connect to their thoughts and their thoughts are then um, you're able to read their thoughts and feel very like, okay, well, no, I'm not getting the best intentions from you. So that's what a lot of people are going through if you're being, um, you know, well, I, I'm calling it sus. I call people sus. Uh, or I don't have, I don't feel like that anymore. But when I was literally experiencing that, I was laughing at it because it was funny to me because I have a good sense of humor. And, you know, I would play along with it for a second. I'd be like, really? For real now? Tell me more about it, you know, and I would literally just turn it into a joke. And so a lot of you guys are taking this too seriously. So you have to turn it into a funny joke. You have to just like, OK, for real now. And, you know, um, how many of you have experienced a quote unquote sus person? Put a one. So I, I could continue. If not, I'm just going to move on to, you know, the next part. Okay, no sus people? Okay. <laughs> okay, somebody has been sus people? Suspicious people? People that try to trigger you or you think they're trying to, but they're just saying something? Trigger, trigger. Okay. Um, okay. All right, all right, all right. So these people, you know, they may be totally unconscious and unaware of what they're doing. And sometimes they may be what I call um, like their subconsciousness begins to speak to you because you're able to pick up on it and bring it out of them. Okay. So when, when you're bringing the subconscious out of other people and they just start speaking to you, uh, sometimes you're able to, uh, you know, understand what's happening or sometimes it's like, okay, well, this person is a little bit strange or sus. You say your whole family. Uh, yeah. That's how, you know, the intentions are not good or you need to, or you have outgrown them when you've outgrown people and you can feel, you know, that they don't have your best intentions in mind or that they're not good for your subconscious mind. I'll say that then you will definitely distance yourself from those people. So a lot of the triggers that come from these suspicious people or people that you know that are acting a little bit off or acting a little bit triggering to you are literally triggering your subconscious mind by things that they do or say that you haven't been picking up on before you, you know, kind of awakened. 
Okay. So that you may have to deal with if that is, you know, part of your family, but if they're just normal people that you can dismiss and not have to be around as much at that time, during that time, then distance yourself because being alone at this time will also help you get in touch with your subconscious mind. And so you can work through whatever that is. But at the same time, you can definitely distance yourself and not feel bad about it. Because a lot of people have been asking me, well, how do I cut these people off? <laughs> Ask them for some money. <laughs> I always say that on my other channel. The best way to get rid of people, ask them for some money. They'll get rid of themselves, if, especially if they ain't got it, baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. You say, yeah, they are called mind readers. Yes. And the whole thing about mind readers and the funny thing about mind readers is that you can lie to yourself. You can imagine things and you can also... Uh, you know, this is another way to transmute it. You can think about things that are funny. And so if someone is going to be sus and read your mind, then it's going to just come back with something that's comical. <laughs> you know, uh, the same way that you, you play with the, um, the algorithm where you just start talking about something and then you open up your social media and there's a commercial for it. Uh, we would play a game where we would talk about the silliest stuff or the funniest or weirdest stuff and to see if the algorithm would pick up on it. And they would and they would. And so it's kind of the same thing. And so if you're uh, thinking about silly stuff, that's what's going to be presented to you. And then it's easy to laugh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can lie to yourself like um, my favorite color is such and such. And then somebody who is I, I don't know I'm, I don't know what to say like, y'all are calling it mind readers if somebody is a quote-unquote a mind reader they'll be like is your favorite color black is your favorite color black is your favorite color black and you could say how did you know and then it's your own private joke because you're they're picking up on the lie versus your truth okay so when you pick up on a lie versus your truth you know that what's happening is a joke and then you just laugh yeah <laughs> okay it's the same way like okay y'all remember the movie um ouija board or ouija and they were testing out to see if this was a, a, a person that had passed or some type of demon and so they were asking a question and instead of thinking of the truthful thought they thought up a lie instead and when, you know, when they asked the person, you know, the question who was supposed to be from, you know, the person who had passed on, it answered the same lie that was that was thought instead of the truth. So what you're dealing with is your own ability to transmute and create something funny. And once and when you keep doing that, um, you know, a lot of these oppositions that are you know in your uh, path start to literally disappear because they really can't affect you <laughs> okay you said you this happened to you believe your injury start confu confusing others that try to read it i've been laughing yes you just you just uh, you just put out stuff that is funny to you and then if there's no effect or if it can't really get to you and you know send you running back to your um religion or send you into fear or send you to a um, psychiatrist's office they just give up like literally it's like okay well they're not falling for the okie doke so let's go find somebody else that doesn't know as much as this person okay because like you really can't mess with some people that have more knowledge okay that's why i said the more knowledge you have the you know the less things can affect you, especially in your awakening and in your, um, you know, divinity. So y'all have to think about that. Um, yes. So, oh, this is actually a painting that I found online long, long ago. And that's where I got my name from. This is the goddess Ashira. And I found the painting online, like before I started this channel. So um, that's where, like, since we kind of favor a little bit, I, you know, 
I said, oh, my name didn't be Ashira, but I took off the H for this channel. Anyway, sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. How do you transmute negative energies? Someone who tries to impose themselves on you, even if you keep the distance from them. They keep on giving me negative. Yeah, I've, I've dealt with that too. You could just cut them off and tell them off. All you have to do is say, you know what? Or ask them for some money, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm trying to tell y'all. Sometimes the answer is this simple. And y'all just rack your brains trying to figure out how to distance yourself. Ask them for a big sum of money. They'll be gone on quick. Okay? That's how you transmute negative energies that won't leave you alone. Ask them for some money. <laughs> you said, what if it's a co-worker? Ask them to do your work. Then ask them for some money. <laughs> Keep asking them for favors and they won't come back around. I promise you. <laughs> you got to transmute it, baby. You got, you have to flip the script. You start doing things that trigger them. You start doing things that they don't like and then they gone. Quick, fast, and in a hurry, never to return. Okay, ask the coworker for money too. Ask them, for, I forgot my purse today. You taking me to lunch? Oh my gosh, can you do this work? I have to go to the bathroom. You know. <laughs> uh, or start, start talking about something that they're uncomfortable with. And they'll be gone on their own, okay? Um, you said, who are them and why do they do that? Um, I have no idea, but the, the best way to think about it is that I am getting ready to be divine. Oh my gosh. Look at all this stuff that's trying to stop me from reaching my divinity. I must be special. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm, I'm receiving this as a compliment that you're even bothering me. Yes, I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. <laughs> so the attention that you're getting with all these issues is a compliment or if you want to think of it in a different way a form of initiation to your divinity so however you want to look at it depending on the day depending on how you feel that's how you look at it and you'll rise higher because you feel higher so you're going to be like, why is this all this happening to me? I don't know. I have so much anxiety and people are weird and they're sus and th this is triggering to me. And, 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 and no, dang, look at all this stuff trying to come against me as I get to my divinity. Oh, my gosh. They must really not want me to get there. So I'm going to get there, period. And you know what? When you get there and you start making yourself laugh or you start combating these issues with you know, your humor or your reverse psychology, as some of you guys say, they disappear because they can't affect you anymore. But some people don't know, know this and they go rush to get drugs from their psychiatrist or they go rush to, you know, go back to the church or whatnot. But literally, it's either you rise up or you go back to where you were before. You know, because most of the people that are affected by this are usually on the verge of finding their divinity anyway. And that shift or that frequency change or maybe you opened your third eye or it was opened by accident or unknowingly. Um, you started experiencing these things. If you don't know what it is, then you're literally going to have a lot of fear. OK, and I do suggest that when you're going through that, don't drink coffee or any caffeine because it will enhance, you know, your anxiety or fear. But once you've conquered it and reached your divinity, then you, you do what you want. OK, um, you said the devil comes hard. Yeah. But, you know, then I made a joke. It's like, you know what? The devil liked me too much. <laughs> you feel it love. So he do what I say now, sparkle, sparkle. You see, that's the transmutation, baby. So if you think it's the devil after you or some demons, then think of yourself as, oh my gosh, they're going to fall in love with me and do whatever I say. Have that, have that confidence within yourself if you're rising to your divinity. I mean, how, why wouldn't you be able to make the devil fall in love with you if you are that powerful? <laughs> 
So that's what I say. Like people were like, oh, the devil is against you. Oh, the devil is this or the devil. Is, well, they, the devil in love with me. So he's going to do what I say. <laughs> you know, or, or if somebody says, oh, you're, you're, what you're teaching is bad and you're going to go to hell. I said, that's okay. The devil loved me there. <laughs> Or then when somebody says, you're doing God's work, I know, because I do what I do. I do my work every day. So, yeah, that's all you have to think about. Like, don't let people put fear into you. Take the fear back and, and make it funny. Because could you imagine if the devil was really after me? Like, you know, I try to seduce him. You know, like, hey, devil, how you doing? <laughs> Like that's how I combat my problems. I don't, I don't run and get across and uh, and start praying. I, I I seduce the devil and make him mine. <laughs> if y'all haven't followed me, <laughs> enchantress, yes. Are you going you gonna come after me? Be careful what you wish for, baby, because I'm I'm gonna get you. <laughs> See, my new sugar daddy. So, <laughs> So, you know, you got to you got to understand sometimes you can't be afraid. You have to make them your be. You know what I'm saying? Make them your be. Yo, like Nicki Minaj say, y'all sons, of my, you know, y'all are my sons. Go sit on a potty. And though when you do that, it's like, dang, we can't do that. She ain't afraid of the devil. She ain't afraid of this. She ain't not afraid of that. She's not afraid of them people. Oh, my goodness. What she's afraid of getting this money. So send it to me. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm afraid of y'all sending me some money. Oh, you know, reverse psychology. And the funny thing is, I literally thought that is how to combat, you know, people trying to affect um, your ability to earn or whatever. And I was like, well, if y'all if y'all out here looking for stuff to fear and, and, and it comes to you because, you know, uh, they're sensing, oh, what does she fear? What does she fear? Uh, send it her way. And guess what? Send me some money. I fear the money. Come on with it. And so that's how you have to think. You transmuting what they're trying to use as a fear and lie. And when I say lie to yourself or you call them the mind readers, lie to the mind readers. And all it's going to do is compute the lie and send it your way. And guess what? You can make it work for you. It's called the great work. It is called transmutation in alchemy, spiritual alchemy. Okay. Turning lead into gold. Turning fear into money. Okay. As I said, if you if you can't transmute without profiting from it, then you doing it wrong. <laughs> Don't transmute to the bare minimum. Don't transmute to no fear. Transmute to money. And that make them even more mad. You know, just like Beyonce said, best revenge is your paper. Mm. Best revenge is your paper. Not neutralizing the problem, but getting some money out of it. Like, if, if someone felt like, okay, I don't like what this person is teaching on YouTube, um, so this is going to be the target for today or for this week or for this month or however long it lasts for you guys, and they want to stop what you're doing and teaching, then, um, of course, you're going to experience some, some issues. But at the same time, you can take yourself out of it, elevate yourself up to the next level and get your money while you're doing it, okay? He said, let the haters be your motivators. Yes. And when you get that money, everything else is like, bye-bye. I'm getting paid. Bring it on if you want, because it's just going to bring me more money. So um, I think there was a verse in Lupe Fiasco song, um, The Show Goes On, which is a really good song. If you are experiencing what I'm talking about, li listen to The Show Goes On by Lupe Fiasco. And he says, um, unaffected by the... Uh, unaffected by the whips. I just put my feet up on their desk and get busy on their ass. <laughs> so that means he's getting ready to make his money. Going to transmute the negative into profits and all that kind of stuff. So you got to get your money. That makes them mad. If you could, like, if you're if you're trying to transition from humanity or your human self to your divine self, divine divine divinity. God, goddess, they they got their own money. They don't have to beg and borrow and plead to other people for financial stability, you know. So 
this is a great time if you're experiencing it to get through it and figure out how to get some more money out of it. Even if it's using reverse psychology, you know, by if, if, if it's amplifying your fears by what you're thinking about that you fear, then think about money. Okay. If it's amplifying stuff, then think about what you need and want or think about money and it's going to come to you. And switch your thinking to positive. So everything, okay, I'm afraid to be looking extra good and cute for the rest of my life. Bam. That's what's going, that's the frequency you're going to get you. And so that's what you got to do. Instead of thinking about what your greatest fears are, what you're bad at, what you can't do, what you're afraid of, you know, that you're being punished and you have to repent and go back. Like a lot of the trolls will come into my videos and be like, repent, repent. I'm like, repent to who? <laughs> A man? <sighs> for what? Looking this good? Oh, I'm sorry. I look too good for you, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Transmutation. <laughs> Y'all ask me on my other channel how I combat the trolls and have these quick comebacks. Transmutation. Mental transmutation. That's what you have to do. That's what you got to make sure that you are good at and you will have zero problems. It will all just dissipate and leave you alone because you're too good. Okay. You, you graduated to your divinity. Okay. You say you're no longer a victim when you transmute. Exactly. And if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> That's right, Christian. You afraid of winning a lottery? Oh my goodness. You better not play then, girl. You better not play. <laughs> See, that the action doesn't back it up. So, Tracy, I would say this instead. I'm afraid that when I play the lottery, I will win. Because if you're afraid of winning the lottery, you wouldn't play. All right, switch it up. Yes. <laughs> How long have you been doing that? Was it since you were young? No, um, it, I told you it was very recent, um, like in the last couple of years. And but I've always been transmuting stuff before that. But when it came to, you know, combating, you know, the uh, the shift, I'm going to call it the shift or the initiation into your divinity. Um, yeah, it was extra like amplified, like things are coming at you from every direction weird things happening to you, synchronicities, sus people, what someone called mind readers, or people that are like thinking or saying what you're thinking and stuff like that. So because you're amplified and you're turned up and to see yourself and to know that you're divine or you frighten yourself back into the hole of religion and worshiping something outside of yourself. So it's literally self-actualization on, you know, turned up, and either you swim or you sink. Either way, you, you're going to get somewhere. So I, I swam, I floated, I walked on water, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> so that's why they say Jesus walked on water. You know, you swim or you sink. Instead of swimming, that's just the neutral. Walk on water. <laughs> that's why Kanye and, and um, uh, or Ye... And the weekend made that song, I can't walk on water. And, and when Kanye was going through it, y'all got to see it because he was literally going through it. Y'all got to see him go to religion, go to fashion, go to uh, all of the things that he was going through. I mean, it was in the public view. And he, you know, he would dye his hair. He would be suspicious of people. And some of the things that you do while you're in this state, um, like maybe dyeing his hair felt like a way to transmute whatever he was thinking or happening in his life. Um, and I was watching the movie last night. I think it was House Party or LeBron James. They had like a house party where the cleaners went in and like decided to throw a house party to promote their business. And there was this one character in there, Cuddy, and he was like, oh, I'm an Illuminati. And he took him to this like secret Illuminati like den and stuff like that. It was all some weird stuff happening. And then like there was like some battle where, you know, these fighters would come out and, and try to fight you to the death. 
and they killed him. He's like, oh, don't worry. I'll be right back. I got a clone. They're, they're going to clone me. And so his dead body was like laying on the floor and they like put some stuff in his face and his hair was like red and um, dyed red. And when they put the stuff in his face, he came back and woke back up and his hair turned green. So they were like spoofing, like how people think that there's clones, Illuminati and how they uh, kill them and, and then bring them back as a clone. So they were like spoofing that, that uh, conspiracy. And so it was just funny to see how, you know, by spoofing the conspiracy, you're literally transmuting it by spoofing it, you know, and laughing at it. So, um, <laughs> and the part where he was, uh, you know, float, uh, I think he was like, I think it was in the Mercedes Benz. I think uh, Ye was in the Mercedes Benz, uh, was it Dome or whatever? And he had the Donda, which is his mom's name on his shirt and stuff, like literally, um, you know, giving himself over to the divine feminine, his mother, the great mother, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And that was after he started, he did all that Sunday service stuff. So obviously that was not working for him as he wanted it to. But when he started switching over to Donda, 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 went into the darkness. That's why everything was dark because he's in the womb being reborn again. And when he emerged, you know, um, all of a sudden, you know, all this crazy stuff started coming at him again, like with the, the issues with the contracts and all this stuff. And to combat it, he simply said whatever he said, a lie, and to get the reactions, to get the contracts canceled, and he won, you see? So a lot of times what people are doing and you don't realize or understand is really transmuting the things that are coming against them to graduate to their divinity and not need another person or entity or corporation to supply their money. You see, because when, when you when you graduate or you're initiated to your own divinity, you have to make your own money or at least have a side hustle getting there on your way. You know what I'm saying? Because the transition may take a little while, but you got to get it done. So the way he did it was he transmuted that energy, got stuff canceled, then got his own, you know, rights back to his designs and so on and so forth. So even if you say something or think something like my favorite color is this, but it's not and I'm thinking it, or if I say I don't like this, but I really do, but the reaction that I need at the time is from the lie. In order to transmute the situation into my favor to make profit, okay? So that is what, that's what happened in that situation. And that is what happened in a lot of people's situation who are able to, you know, graduate to their divinity and get paid at the same time, which is a lot of people need to do instead of running back to the church and tithing <laughs> to an institution that, you know, feeds off of your fears. And we've seen a lot of people go back to the church, especially on YouTube. We see a lot of people go back to Jesus and start talking about God because they were frightened back to that frequency. Okay. But Kanye, he said, Nope, I'm going, I'm a, I am a God. Mm. And so you got to, you got to take your position. You got to take your place. If you want a God to, or a goddess to come up into you, you have to be the vessel for it to become, you know, here. So it's a, it's a gift to yourself. All right. You said back to being codependent. Exactly. And, and so many people keep asking me and a lot of the, a lot of the issues and a lot of the trolls and a lot of the people that are part of, you know, the whole uh, thing to pull you back into worshiping and being, you know, looking for things outside yourself, all those people who, you know, it's like, oh, you better repent. Oh, you're going to go to hell. Are you going to do great? The devil loves me there. He gave me money when I get there. And then he said, be right back to where I was. And maybe he buy me a plane ticket to wherever I want to go. And, you know, 
Make sure he call every now and then and say, put some money in my cash app. So I don't care. <laughs> you know, they'll be like, oh, blasphemy. You can't say that. I just did. <laughs> okay. I just did. Now what you going to do? And they'll be like, do you worship the devil? I say, no, the devil worship me, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. How you think I get him to do that? Then they have no clue of what to say because religion doesn't teach them how to combat transmutation. <laughs> well, you're crazy. Okay, whatever. Well, I'm paid too. All right. Thank you. So that's what you got to do. Like when these people come at you trying to get you to go back to, you know, looking outside of self for, you know, the answers like you, you ain't got the answers. If you did, you wouldn't be here. I don't do no Botox. Nope. I just transmute. I transmute. Like I, I said, I'm gonna look good for a long, 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 long time. Period. <laughs> um, let's go. So, you know, we're living in a frequency. If you if you graduate to your divinity you are, are in the process of it, uh, if you're in the process, that means you're still battling it. But if you're in the if you've already graduated to your divinity, you know what you speak becomes. And I do. I definitely believe that. Um, transmute means to turn lead into gold if in an alchemy term. So take a bad situation and turn it into profit. So let's say, for example, um, you were uh, like you lost your job. Right. And so that's the lead. So you take that and you go home and you start a business. And maybe, you know, somebody promotes it on their Instagram and it blows up. And the next day, you know, you have a million uh, customers. That's transmutation. Instead of just sitting there and getting mad and looking for another job, you created something that could actually literally get you some money on your own without begging for jobs. So that's an example of transmutation. Or if you want to put it in more simpler terms, taking a potato and turning it into French fries and then selling them for way more than the potato cost. It's like a business, except you get paid for turning problems into money. Okay. And that's what most, most uh, entrepreneurs and millionaires and billionaires say, find where there's an issue or a lack of something and then offer the product or the service that is needed. And then that's how you're going to make your money, turning lemons into lemonade. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> that's that's what that is. So if you're if you're experiencing paranoia. OK, now I haven't talked about this yet. So if you're experiencing parano uh, paranormal paranoia during your shift, understand that sometimes your subconscious mind is telling you that you should be focused on something else versus what you're trying to do instead. So you may, you may feel like, okay, well, I feel like I shouldn't go here today because, you know, um, I feel like something bad is going to happen or I feel like, um, you know, I should stay here because da da da, da. Um, either you face the fear and go anyway, or, and have fun, or you stay home and do something constructive and make money instead of, you know, sitting there in your anxiety and paranoia and fear. You got to, you got to transmute that by getting what you want either way. Okay. So I know a lot of you guys are going through that. So if you feel like, oh, I shouldn't go here or I shouldn't get on a flight or I shouldn't do that, either get on it and go and shut up and have fun or stay home and get your money, you know, or either way you're going to profit and have a good time. Okay. <laughs> Don't sit there and be upset about it and do nothing. Do something. Action definitely pushes you to the next level faster than being too much in your own mind. Okay. A lot of people during this time, especially uh, artists and musicians, they create so much. And a lot of their creations and music and songs are the transmutation of what they're going through. So some artists' songs may seem weird, may seem as if, you know, they're being targeted or just may seem very uh, surreal, uh, may seem very, you know, dark or whatever. And so that is 
what they're doing with their art is they're making money off of it and transmuting the energy and telling their story at the same time. So if you're an artist, use that for your inspiration. Use whatever is coming against you for your inspo. Um, <laughs> I know that there's some people out there that feel like they're being targeted by people. And some people call it what they call it, gang stalking. Some people will think that they're being gang stalked. The same thing, you can transmute that energy very easily. If people are approaching you or people are being sus towards you, ask them for some money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Ask them for some money. They will be gone. <laughs> Ashira, what's a mind reader? Can people be really mind readers? I think we're amplifying our, you know, I think at that time we're amplified frequency wise. And um, maybe the other person is going to be temporarily, I'll say, amplified to pick up on your energy. So at that very moment that you guys talk or meet, they may say something a little bit triggering that you may be thinking. But the, the trick is to think of a lie. And then when they say the lie, you know, it's a, it's a game. You know what I'm saying? So you definitely need to uh, play with it, play with that energy and turn it into comedy. So, and I'm not sure, like, there's so much conspiracy that surround these type of things. You never know who's involved, if it's technology, if it's AI, if it's yourself. But whatever you feel it is, as long as you get through it and get your money or get to the next level of your divinity, then you win. Okay. So it doesn't matter what it is or how it's being done. Stop thinking about that. It doesn't matter. I mean, we got 5G towers everywhere. We got nanoparticles all going up and through us. So it could be being triggered by a lot of the, that kind of stuff. But at the same time, you're still divine. And either it controls you or you control it. Okay. Either way. What also helps is believing what you need to until you don't anymore. Exactly. Advice by Yoshira. Thank you, Ajani. Exactly. Exactly. So um, you know, a lot of people will be confused with religions, spirituality. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in yourself? Do I believe in God? Do I believe in me? Yay. Controversy. Um, then you have, you know, the song by MJ where he's saying, uh, Jam, he said, uh, she, uh, she prays to God, then Buddha, then she sings a Talbot song, contradiction, so confusion. Yes, do we know right from wrong? I just want you to recognize me in the temple. I found peace within myself. No one can hurt me now because I found peace within myself. So Jam or whatever. It's the song from Jam. It's the song Jam by Michael Jackson. So basically, he was, a lot of artists go through it. And so when you go through it, you make your music. You transmute it, you tell your story, and then you're done. And the higher you get in your goddess or God status, you, you got to keep initiating higher and higher. And then guess what? When you finish, no one can touch your no one can touch your legacy. Period. Okay. The great work is, is what it's called. Okay. You said bars. Um, so believe in yourself if you want to. Okay. And then here's how some people stay politically correct or good with the church. They just think of themselves as God or goddess. And when people say, do you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God because, and then they're whispering their back because God is me, <laughs> you know, so lying to yourself or telling yourself the truth when people, when you feel like you're lying, um, it works both ways. So let's say if you have contracts with a lot of people that may have a religious side and you want to keep that money and they ask you, do you believe in God? Then you say, okay, well, I think I'm God or goddess. So yeah, I believe in me. I mean, I believe in God. Yes. <laughs> so if you, if you're thinking like that, then you're not lying to yourself. And if they believe in God and they worship God, then what have they just done? They're worshiping you and your mind. So that's transmutation of, you know, if you feel like you're being forced to believe in something, 
um, transmuted in your own mind is that these people are worshiping me because I think I'm God. And they're sitting here asking me if I believe, I do believe in myself. And if you believe in me, then I believe in you too. <laughs> you do that too? All right. It's easy, right? It's like, the prince, prince taught me that. Do I believe in God? Do I believe in me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I am a one and the same, baby. And like, even if you can quote from different religions, different texts, you, the, even Jesus said, I am one with the Father, which means I am God, period. So, and people want to drag you down to looking for, you know, um, things outside of yourself to save you or to worship or to put your faith in so that you have no control over your own destiny so that it's harder for you to manifest. It's harder for you to get what you want. It's you're living in fear. It's easier to manipulate you and easier to take advantage of you. It's easier to fool you because you live in fear. But when you don't live in fear and you feel like you are the creator of your own life, then they can't really do anything because you keep creating against them. Okay. It's kind of like in the movie, uh, What's that movie? It, it, basically, you just keep creating against them. And whatever they try, it doesn't work because you're already here. It's like, okay, well, I'll just transmute that, y'all. Are y'all getting tired yet? Because I'm just going to transmute it into making me more money and then y'all going to be even more mad. Period. <laughs> y'all want to see me rich? Then keep. <laughs> Well, here you are. So I'm just trying to help the people. I, I literally made this video to help people, not to tell my story or nothing like that. I'm trying to help those because I see them suffering and they are clueless. And they don't know what to do. Graduate to your divinity. Learn about yourself. Learn about who you are and your frequency and that you have the ability to create the life that you want versus begging and asking and being controlled. Okay. Oh, a tip for... Thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle Tracy. Um, and, you know, I don't like to talk to talk about specific people, but I know a lot of you guys know um, and been watching YouTube and you've seen a lot of people, you know, uh, stop their whole channels, delete their whole channels, take all their work away and, and say, oh, you know, I found the Lord because they were scared out of becoming better. They were scared out of their... Uh, you know, uh, ability to improve and create and push their message and be sent to the next level of their divinity. They are afraid of the obstacles or what was coming against them. And so if you are a divine being, you're, you don't have fear. You don't have that fear. Okay. So you have to, you have to be like, you know what? Nope. Okay, so you gotta be like, I don't care, do what you want, because you know what? I'm gonna transmute it and get this money. I'm, I'm, you're gonna be even more bad. Okay, so when when you're able to do that with ease, with creativity, with art, with anything, mentalism, whatever, you win, and all of that just dissipates. It dissipates. And, you know, when you when you try to tell people that are going through it, they may feel triggered by you even knowing what they're going through because they think it's an individual thing. And when they figure out that it's not an individual thing, because they start to kind of read in, into like, OK, other people are saying they're going through it as well. So it must be a group effort. OK, so the reason I made this video is to help those people that maybe a little bit triggered or sus by the people that have already been through it. Let me tell you, that's part of it. And if you run back to something outside of yourself, then your divinity, then you don't have control over your own destiny anymore. You're going to feel more controlled and you have to look up to a patriarchal system or a patriarchal religion to feel safe. You know what I'm saying? Even though we created all of this um, ourselves as individuals and divine beings, 
it's almost like turning yourself inside out and going back into hiding. So you may still have a religious background or you may still have, you know, the quotes of the Bible, but you need to use them to promote yourself into your own divinity. Because what people don't realize that in the Bible, what it says is ye are gods and goddesses. And the part in the Bible where it says Jesus was being targeted and they was looking for him and his friend betrayed him because he was preaching that he, ye are gods and him and the father is not separate. They came after him. Okay. So when you realize who you are, it doesn't bother you. Your message will remain legendary and immortal. But if they can put the fear into you to take your message away, to take your example away from showing other people how to do things or how to elevate themselves, then they win. So you can't allow them to win. You can't allow them to win. You gotta. You, you are a goddess. You are a god. Act like one. And when you start doing that, you take all of that power away, all of it. And even in the story of the Jesus's resurrection, he came right back, showed him his scars, and then went up into his divinity. And a lot of people think that's a death. It's a it's a death of your humanity up into your divinity. Rise. You know what I'm saying? So you're just rising to your own divinity, to your own legend, to your own living eternal legend. But if you sink back down and cower and run, it's not going to help you. You got to you gotta rise up, baby. Okay. You said once you know, you can't unknow. Exactly. And so I, I try to explain it in, you know, biblical way, spiritual way alchemy way because either way you can you know you can use what you know to transmute or to create what you want instead okay so keep going don't stop till you get enough <laughs> as michael jackson says don't stop till you get enough and like beyonce said or we, the weekend and beyonce said she this <laughs> said she made enough but she'll never leave she already made enough, but she'll never leave. And that song, Six Inch Heels, already made enough, but she'll never leave. Six Inch Heels. You know why? Because you don't have to leave. Nobody's going to force you out of your position, but you. Okay? And your fears. Um, once you know, you know. And then you can see, um, you can see what people are experiencing if you've already experienced it. And even though they might think you're a little sus, if you, uh, if you say truth, then they will recognize that, you know, you probably know what you're talking about and it could help. So. You're okay. Let me see. I'm going to answer some questions. Y'all got any questions that are related to the video? <laughs> that are related to the topic of the video. Thank you. Okay. Topic of the video. All right. So, you know, how many people know someone who, how many people have been through it and now know someone who's going through it? The same, the same transition. How to transmute somebody being rude to you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to answer that. And uh, don't take it personally. That's how you transmute it. Their opinion does not matter unless they're paying you to act offended. That's how you do it. Send them a cash app and say, if you want to give me your opinion, send some money with it, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, make your money. If they're not paying your bills, then their opinion does not count if you don't want it to. Okay. So that's how. How do you take the fear away from getting involved with low 
enforcements when you have high vibration and don't want to get involved with low vibration people and these people turn against you. Ask them for money, Rose. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you ask some people for money, they leave you alone. <laughs> okay. Ask them for money. That is the easiest way to get rid of people. Promise you. It also helps you work on your ego because a lot of people look, I have too much pride to ask for money, but that's not the reason you're asking. You don't need it. You're just trying to get rid of them. And if they give it to you, you still win. Because when they come back, ask them for some more. And when they don't return, then you got money and solve the problem. You get it? So take your power and your money back. Because guess what? A lot of people who go through this miss out on a lot of money because they can't concentrate long enough to do their work, to create, unless they transmute it and figure out how to get paid through it. Okay? So do it like that. Where do we start? Is there a book? I'll rewatch. Yeah, rewatch the video because if you're not experiencing it or going through it, then, you know, if you ever start feeling a certain way, you'll know it and you'll know exactly what to do. How to transmute loss of loved one to power? Well, what do they want for you? What do they want you to do in your life? You know, allow them to live through you and finish what they started or make them proud or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Make that your motivation. You, you know, make it your motivation to make them proud. There you go. <sighs> How do entities in the universe know when you are becoming divine? It seems like you shine. Your frequency is higher. They can tell that you're on the way to greatness. And a lot of energies don't want your message or your artwork or your uh, music or whatever to get on an iconic level. And so, um, or if you want to see it as uh, your own self or however you want to view it, basically whatever is coming against you doesn't want you to get to your next level. And so you use that either as fuel or to push you back backwards so that's how when i did it did it feel like close to death no it felt to me it did not feel like death at all it felt like life like i could finally feel the things that um i needed to feel in order to get to that next level okay because what is death the actualization of life so literally, it wasn't like death. It was like life. Because most people are the walking dead or the living dead right now because they're not in their divinity. So they're not eternal. So when you walk and you feel like, you know, this, is, this must be death. No, this is life. Okay? You feel life. You feel life. And when you feel life, then you say, you know what? I'm getting ready to do this and do what you want. And also, like, a lot of people feel like they need to be doing so much or rushing and, and, and putting out a lot of, you know, things at the same time or doing a lot of work or creating this, 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 and that. If it's not naturally flowing from you or you're not using something as fuel, then take a break. Because sometimes taking a break allows other people to absorb what you've put out already. Not a permanent break, but just a little break, you know, just like maybe if you if you do something every day, maybe do it every other day. If you do something every week, maybe do it once a week um, and skip a week. You know what I'm saying? Um, and skip a week in, in the month. But take a small break, not a big break, because you have all these people that are feeling all this crazy way. And then they take a whole hiatus and then they lose money. Don't do that. Stay consistent. Because I've seen a lot of YouTubers leave for months and months, took up all their content, and then they come back and trying to start over. Don't You don't need to start over. You need to be consistent in what you do. Follow through. Take a little bitty break. Have stuff that's already created so that if you need to produce something or have a savings so that if you need to do something, you got your money. So you can't do that. Don't, don't let them put you back at square one. It's not going to work for you. And there will be energies that are coming to you, like especially content creators. There will be energies trying to influence you 
to delete your whole channel. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? You must be, you must be cray cray for real. Because I'm not doing that. I have over a thousand something videos. I'm not going to delete all that. Go on, on with yourself. You talk to them just like a Dusty. <laughs> you think of them as the Dusties. You know, I know you mad, but you know what? Get your money up. <laughs> so, you know, you must be crazy. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and so they will make you, a lot of the energies will try to make you feel guilty or like you shouldn't be doing that. Or, um, and then you have to think, you're not the authority of me. I do what I want. Like Cartman from South Park. I do what I want. You know, transmuting it with comedy, self-actualization and confidence gets you there every time. It's like, who are you? You must not know about me. <laughs> yep. And I've seen so many people delete their whole channel. Like, where did they go? I'm looking for them. Where are you at? Oh, you didn't got scared off. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Don't do that, y'all. Don't get scared off. Don't delete your whole content, okay? Yeah. And if you're not a content creator, you might get rid of a bunch of stuff in your house that you might feel guilty about. Like a lot of people that went through this transition, oh, I got to get rid of all my tarot cards and all my oracle cards and all my occult stuff. And you had put in all that energy and work and learned about it. Now you scared away and giving it away. Then uh, after you're finished, back you know, down to square one. Now you're interested in it again and you want more tarot cards. I'm like, keep your tarot cards, girl. <laughs> put, them in the, put them in a drawer until you're ready to come back to them. Because a lot of times people go through all these shifts and changes and they this religion one week, this religion the next week, throwing their tarot cards out one week, buying them the next week. I'm like, you know what? Just keep all your stuff unless it's something you don't want, like old clothes that are out of style. Or old makeup that's expired, throw that out, yes. But keep the stuff that you obviously were attracted to and invested in that gave you more spiritual knowledge. Keep it. Don't don't be letting these things get uh, direct you what to do if you are your own divinity. You know, do what you want. Do what you want. Exactly. You say you deleted your whole Facebook friends list. I kept everything. <laughs> I kept everything. You know why? Because people don't tell me what to do. Not even energies or, you know, feelings that aren't authentic. Because I know myself so much that I would never erase all the things that I've done or get rid of all the things that I've invested in. I would never do that. <laughs> okay. That's not, that's not who I am. So guess what? I let that little energy pass. And I kept all my stuff and I, you keep rising higher. You don't, you don't listen to stuff that's not from yourself. Okay. Um, you said your Facebook permanently deleted. Okay. Well, you know, I, I kept everything because I didn't need to. What would be the point? And the reason why I'm saying this is like, I, I didn't never, I, I say, okay, well, I, I feel like I should start over and da, 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 da. then I was like, well, why should I start over? That's dumb. I came this far. I'm going further. That's it. Nobody can scare me into doing anything. I'll scare them because I'm going to make more money no matter what. <laughs> and they don't like that when you make, uh, when you transmute. Okay. Ain't no way I'll toss out my tear. Exactly. But people will have you thinking minute, like not people, but like, these energies when you're transforming from human to divine will, will make you start thinking everything is your fault. Have y'all been through that where y'all feel like everything is your fault or if you choose to do something that it can affect this over here, like the butterfly effect? Have y'all ever experienced that in your awakening or whatever? Okay, I'm just saying, put a one if y'all have. Um, you say how to stop fluctuating between old self and divine self. Uh, you have access to both selves when you are divine self. Sp sprinkle, sprinkle. So you're not flipping and flopping. You just know who you are. You can do what you want. You enter multi-dimensional being. Okay. Okay. So you've experienced the, uh, the thinking things are your fault. Okay, so I'm going to tell you all how to transmute that when you think everything is your fault. You ain't the first person on the planet 
So everything is not your fault. <laughs> okay. And if everyone else is experiencing this or many other people are experiencing this at the same time, then it's their fault. And then it's not your fault. It's everybody's fault. How about that? And keep it moving. If more than one person is experiencing this, then it can't just be your fault. Said so it's Eve's fault. No, it's the snake fault. No, it's not the snake's fault. Who created the snake or the serpent? It's their fault. No, it's the universe's fault. No, it's the multi multiverse's fault. No, it's the omniverse's fault. And then you're just going to start laughing at yourself. It's everybody's fault. Forget it. You know what? I'll take the blame. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Blame it on me. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I, I must be powerful if I can do all of that. So you just boosted my ego even more. And I don't care. Oh, I must just be like the God in the Bible. I can, everything that I do, you know, I, I flooded the earth. I killed a bunch of people with famine. Oh my gosh, I must be all powerful like the God in the Bible. Oh my gosh. I wonder if the God in the Bible felt guilty about doing all those things. You know, transmute that. I guess not. I guess it was my fault. <laughs> so transmute it like that, okay? You said you feel your husband's a mind reader, but that, is that a bad thing? Not if you think of what you want. Think about money, girl. Think about what you want. Bring me some gifts. Pay these bills, baby. You can use this to your advantage, Taylor. Make him read your mind. Like, literally, like, your husband is going to be able to bring you what you want. So use this time to make him worship you. Okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. You don't love anybody else but me. You give me your whole paycheck. You do this. You do the dishes, baby. You do all the laundry. Yes. <laughs> Transmute them into what you want. Okay. Your response when someone calls you the devil. <laughs> no one calls me. So, you know, I know. I, I say, well, if that's how you think of me. <sighs> no one called like I don't care about people calling me the devil <laughs> you know it doesn't matter to me because I, I know who I am but when people call you something like that don't take offense to it say well I don't know maybe you fear me do you fear the devil <laughs> and you don't like what I'm doing then don't look don't watch Click on something else that you like. Um, when did your spiritual journey begin? Um, I don't know, like when you when you say a spiritual journey, because I've been learning stuff since I was very, very young. So I would say my learning aspect of the spiritual journey began when I was in like elementary school, maybe. Um, but I've experienced a lot of spiritual things prior to that. But when I was really, um, you know, rising as far as, you know, the things that I do, um, a lot of people don't like some of my messages or maybe I was getting a lot of knowledge and my um, human self needed to transform into her divine self. And so in that shift and in that transition, I would say that that might be what some people are describing as a spiritual journey. But uh, all you have to do is transmute whatever is coming against you and turn it into money or profit or something very, very beneficial to you. And that's how you get to the, your divine self. Okay. Um, but I think when a lot of people started going through it, the shift was around 2020 that time. And um, so I would say about that time is when things started, you know, getting a little bit interesting. How do I deal with negative and noisy parents when it live together in this period? Get you, get you some earbuds, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle some, get some headphones and some earbuds. Noise canceling headphones and block them out, baby. <laughs> and, you know, 
you can't hear nothing, but whatever you want, want choose to put in that uh, speaker. Okay. So um, that's how. What if you, okay, let me see. What if you feel it doesn't serve you anymore? How do you know if it's the energies or if it's needing to bring you your, to your true life calling? Um, I believe that you already, okay, for me, okay, let me read this again. What if you feel it doesn't serve you anymore? What What's it? How do you know if it's the energies or if it needs to bring to you? You only bring yourself and you only create your true life's calling. This is how I think. Okay, it, You're still grasping for from things outside of yourself to bring you somewhere. If you are divine, you bring yourself to wherever you're trying to go. You create your own purpose. Okay. So unless you want to, like, if, if someone says, okay, I'm looking for my purpose. I'm looking for my purpose versus I created my purpose. You know, then create your purpose. You can recreate your purpose, but you don't need to go looking for it. If you read the book, The Alchemist by um, Paulo Paulo, what was his last name? If you read the book, The Alchemist, he went on his whole journey looking for stuff. Then he wound up right back home because it was all supposed to be from within. Sorry if y'all haven't read it, spoilers. So he went on a whole journey for I don't know how long he took to go through that whole journey. He, he was trying to get to the pyramids or something. And then he came right back home when he woke back up and realized he was exactly where he was supposed to be. Oh, Paolo Kahlo, thank you. Coelho, Coelho, okay, yes. So um, I know his book is on YouTube in an audio book form if y'all have not gotten to read it. Just like The Wizard of Oz, yes. So if you get deterred off your path, and lose yourself and think that you have to seek a new purpose because you're lost or you think that you're being, a, you know, um, forced or it's uh, driving fear into you to do, change directions. That should be your decision and only your decision as a conscious being with free will. So think about that. You have free will, right? So none of these energies are able to convince you to do something else. That is your choice and your decision. So when you, when you, when you start feeling a certain way, oh, this, oh, that, no, I do what I want. Exactly. Okay. So you have to do what you want, not what people say you should do, not what you, you're getting fed to do, not what, you know, these energies are trying to influence you to do, do what you want with your own free will. That's how, that's how you do, um, deal with that. Okay. If you don't have a life's purpose, it could be very confusing. If you never created your life's purpose, it can be very confusing. So if you are in that state, create a purpose because you're always going to be looking for it if you don't create it. Okay. All right. Um, how do you get over feeling guilty or fear? I know logically we shouldn't care, but okay. The best way to get over guilt or fear is transmute it. So you, it's also a way to lie to yourself or trick yourself or trick the energies. So whatever you feel guilty about, or whatever, okay, let's start with the guilt. Whatever you feel guilty about, just say, you know, well, if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here today. And I like where I am today. Or if this wouldn't happen, then this person wouldn't have been here in my life. So I feel no guilt. It was meant to be. And it was because I chose that path and I chose it on my own. And so look at it as a stepping stone. If that stone, if that stepping stone wasn't there, you wouldn't be here. You know, um, and then for fear. Learn whatever is much. learn as much about whatever your fear. Um, and it takes away a lot of the fear, just having the, the um, knowledge behind it. So, um, or, you know, you can say, I don't really fear that. I was taught to fear that, you know, and so I don't. 
how to connect the dots for the bigger picture vision. Um, connecting the dots, if, when you finish going through that process and you've transmuted all the stuff that's trying to come against you and you've turned it into money, then at this time, you literally just get whatever it is that, you know, do whatever it is you are doing in the first place to continue on your journey with more knowledge and also the knowledge that, you know, um, you're now divine in your thinking and your spirit and your frequency and keep it going. And, you know, continue up on your journey, on your purpose that you created. Okay. Could keep going. How do you overcome from depression when you, from not being where you thought you would be in life? If you were supposed to be there, you'd be there. I'd say that. That's like me saying, oh, I'm depressed because I'm not the president of the United States. Because I think I should be there. <clears throat> no, you're exactly where you are due to the way that you think and the purpose that you've created for yourself. If you give yourself a purpose, maybe you would go wherever that purpose that you created takes you. But if you're living without creating your purpose, then you can get lost in the mundane every day to day and then life won't seem like it should so create don't look for no purpose create a purpose okay create a purpose stop looking for it go, go create it anything you choose because you can always create another purpose and another purpose and another purpose. you don't have just one purpose at one point, my purpose was to help, you know, certain people. My purpose was to, you know, do this. Now it's to do that, you know. So you can constantly create new purpose if you are done with the old purpose. But don't ever, you know, abandon and say, well, that wasn't my purpose. That was your purpose at the time. And keep it moving, you know. Uh, you said, what's the max, what is the max people do you turn against you? What's the max people do you turn against you, Ashira? Okay, I don't, I think you mistyped that. So write it again, because I, I don't want to answer it incorrect. Mm -hmm. You said, this is the worst planet for creation. Well, it's, it's the best planet to create what I want. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You know, it works in my favor, 100%. Okay, so true. The only times I have been lost was when I didn't create purpose. Yes. Uh, creating purpose. Okay, so let's say you're sitting in your house and you want to do something. You need a purpose. Okay, I need a purpose. I need a purpose. You can't think of anything good or, out, you know, you know, just outstanding. So create a small purpose. Okay. Hey, I have these tarot cards here. Let me read your cards. Give me five dollars. <laughs> Give me ten dollars. All right. I'm reading these cards. Oh, thank you. Helped me so much because you confirmed what I was thinking. And, you know, I, and now, you know, I, I made the right decision and now I'm getting paid. Well, you're welcome. There is your temporary purpose. That's an example of creating a purpose. That might not be your life purpose, but it was your purpose for the moment. It helped someone else and you got paid. Maybe your next purpose, oh, now you want to be more creative. Make something. Create something with your hands. Okay. Sell it. Maybe that's not your, maybe you, maybe you want to go to school and, you know, uh, help people, you know, figure out things and da, 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 you know, a career counselor or something, help people find what they want to do for a career. If you're not into, you know, if you're not into, if you're into working for other people. But if you are into working for yourself, create purpose for yourself, you know. And when you're done with that, create a different purpose. Each purpose gets you to the higher purpose that you create because you say, OK, well, I can do that. So I know I can do this and on to the next level and on to the next level. OK, so create small purposes at first, then elevate those purpose as you go, as you get more, you know, um, experience. 
Okay. Keep getting. What's the maximum people can you do to return again? Okay. What's the maximum people? Okay. What's the most people can do to turn against you? Acknowledge your presence. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Once they acknowledge your presence. Okay. Let, let me put this on the screen. The most people can do to turn against you is to acknowledge your presence and to let others know that they're against you. That's the most they can do. Everything else is up to you from that point on. The most they can do is acknowledge your presence and that they don't like what you're doing. But everything else is literally your own creation. You decide what you want to do about that. Okay. So either you could say, well, I don't care how many people are against me. I don't care how many people turn against me. I don't care. I don't know them. They know me though. So I guess if I were them and I was living their lives, feeling whatever they're feeling, I might be bad at me too. So I can't really blame them. So I forgive them for not having enough of a life to focus on improving it or they have to focus on mine because they have nothing else to do and they have never created their purpose. So I guess it makes me feel good about myself and boosts my confidence level up one more notch. Okay. So that's how I'm thinking of it. That transmutation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. How do you handle false rumors? Accept them and, and make them into a joke. So, for example, let's say someone made a false rumor about you. Claim it's true. Yeah, it's true. And then they'll start to question why you answered so quickly, why you're claiming that it's true, even if it's going to ruin your reputation. You say it with confidence and you say it with um, satire. They're not going to believe it anyway. I said, like, I don't know what you heard. <laughs> okay, well, if you believe it's true, it's true. I don't like it. If this is going to earn me some money, if it ain't, then it ain't true. Don't even really acknowledge it seriously. Just admit to it and keep it moving. It's like, okay, it's whatever you believe, baby. You want to believe it, believe it. <laughs> you don't, you don't. <laughs> you know, just nonchalantly not care. OK. If you don't care, they'll stop caring because you're putting out that frequency that you don't care and then they won't care no more. You're like, I don't care if they, she don't care. I don't bother her. So it must not be true. <laughs> you have to take your power back. OK. Uh, I, I think Lizzo made a song called All the Rumors Are True. Y'all heard that with Cardi B? All the rumors are true. Yeah. She made a song out of it and got paid. That's transmutation. <laughs> okay. So take it, turn it, flip it, and get your money. Um, let's see. Let me see some of these questions. Now I'm going back. I'm getting back. Okay, what about transsexuals? Are they living an authentic life? If they created their own purpose, their own look, their own identity, then of course they are. Because people do the same thing when they get into the industry. You come into the industry, like um, in the music industry or the mu movie industry, they totally transform you into whatever they want you to be. And those people are living authentic lives. They just recreated them. So if, you, if someone chooses to recreate themselves, in order to live a more fulfilled life on their own terms, I feel like they should be able to do so. You know, just like a lot of these women out here are going to recreate their entire body, doing more work than a trans, getting more surgeries and operations than a trans woman or a trans man. They're doing more work than a lot of these trans uh, people are. So I look at it that way. Do you really need a BBL, fake boobs, fake lips, filler all up in your face? to live an authentic life. <laughs> if they can, you know, anybody else should be able to as well. So we are the creators of what we wanna be. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I, I didn't. I, I understand why you asked the question because there is a lot of talk about it in the media. <laughs> it's a distraction, though. Like whenever you hear some weird stuff that's going on, that it's a distraction. Like, um, nobody cares. You know, nobody cares about that. They made you care about that. Okay. They literally forced it upon you to care about that. What other people are doing, how other people are creating their lives. They literally forced you, that on you through the media. Because I don't care. <laughs> do what you want. Do what makes you happy. So we don't, um, we don't care what other people are doing to make themselves feel like they want to. If it's not bothering me, then, you know, it, um, it's all good. That's why I don't really watch the news or too much because I don't care what they're trying to push my way. I choose what I want to see. I choose what I want to be influenced by. Okay. <laughs> All right. How do you feel the phenomena affects flying? Like, you know, like in planes? Um, I feel like a lot of people have fear about certain things at this time if they're experiencing something. I say go if you want. Face the fear. Go if you want. Or find something else productive to do if you're not able to fly you know what i'm saying so find something else profitable to do if you're if you are afraid or don't feel like you should be on a plane do something else that's going to get you paid okay sprinkle sprinkle let don't let the fear work against you let it work for you and get your money okay um and if you're asking me like scientifically does it have anything to do with the planes uh, i definitely feel like planes may be flying a little bit lower but I don't think it, I don't think it's going to affect anything majorly. Hi, Shira. I just wanted to say I've been bringing, binging your content on manifestation, and I'm really grateful for all. Thank you, girl. I'll sprinkle, sprinkle. I, I appreciate you, occult. Koi TV. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh. Do I think watching general Zodiac tarot readers cause fear? I believe that if you, once again, if you buy too much into anything, it will cause fear. So if you understand what tarot is, it's whatever it could happen on the path you're currently on, but you have the ability to change your course or to change your thinking to change the outcome. So whatever is out there in the cards is not permanent it can be changed you know so it's kind of like you go into the doctor and they say okay well if you don't start exercising or eating right you're going to go head down this path so you don't say oh my god I'm, I'm in fear because the doctor said i'm heading down this path because i don't exercise right you can either head down the path or go ahead and do what you're supposed to be doing you know what i'm saying so that's the point like that's like tarot like you go into the doctor and they say you got to do this or this is going to happen so why would you fear if you have control over it? That's that's the that's the question. If you have control to change your course, you shouldn't fear what is ahead if you don't change it. You should just change, transmute it, get your money. <laughs> okay. You said, how do you transmute the fear of success and prosperity? Um don't look at it as trans don't look at it as success or prosperity. Look at it as normal. That's normal. Like it, you go to work every day, you get a paycheck, you clock in, or I don't know where you work, but if you work, uh, you're not afraid to get your paycheck. You ain't afraid of payday, are you? Because that's saying the same exact thing. So we sometimes we have to put things in a more simpler form in order to transmute it as well. So I'm not afraid of payday. That's dumb. <laughs> Maybe my payday may be higher and higher and higher, but I'm not afraid of it. Why? Because I earned that money. So why should I be afraid of something that I earned? That makes zero sense. 
I think what you need to ask is why do you feel like if you become successful, that it's something to fear? Do you not trust yourself with money? Do you think other people are going to come asking you for money? Do you think you're going to feel like people think you're better than them? <laughs> That's what you fear, the judgment of being successful. So my best, my best advice to you, if that's what you fear, is to already act successful. So when you become successful, you don't fear it. You see all these people out here faking it till they make it. That's exactly what you got to do. Stop, stop allowing something that hasn't happened yet to keep you from getting your money. And so what if they judge you? Who cares? And they judge everybody. They judge you for being broke. They judge you for being rich. They judge you for being cute. They judge you for being ugly. They just gonna judge you. But it shouldn't take away your money. <laughs> they judge you for being skinny. They judge you for being fat. They judge you for being this race. They judge you for being that race. So what's the point? You afraid of everything because they're gonna judge you? <laughs> you gotta get your money, baby. You've been seeing so many of my clips on, thank you girls. I don't even have a TikTok account, but you know, people share it there. Um, you said you've been practicing being delusional and it's working. Yes. That's how you transmute things. What the make the Make the impossible possible. That's it. And when, when you start to do that, all the weird sus things and the anxiety things and the mind readers, as y'all call them, and, you know, the feeling of being spiritually attacked goes away because you've risen to that next level where it, it can't get to you. OK, so get your money and keep going and laugh at what laugh at it, because that's a major part of also raising your own frequency out of that frequency is laughter and not falling for the okie doke and your perspective and your consciousness is actually expanding because you can see exactly what's happening and it's funny to you now so now it's like no more power you know it's kind of like you know saying oh my gosh like on the wizard of oz when they thought oz was this big old mighty wizard and it was just the dude behind a curtain <laughs> And laughing and stuff, you know, oh my gosh, you're just an old man, with, you know, um, so it's not, it's not that serious. If you take everything too seriously, it's going to be hard for you. I don't take anything that seriously. I just laugh it, laugh at it and keep it moving or transmute it and get paid because it's not that serious. Because the reason why you shouldn't take everything so seriously is because if you do, you're going to, it's going to affect you more seriously. And if you don't want it to affect you, then don't feel it. Okay. Yeah, don't get lost in the details. Okay, I'm gonna put that one up. Don't get lost in the details. You are blessed and protected. Exactly. Always feel like nothing can ever happen to you. I'm invincible. Okay, invincible. I'm invincible. Nothing can nothing can harm me. Nothing can touch me. I'm divine. <laughs> and that's the frequency you will walk in. Okay. Um, eh. There's plenty of videos on symbolism and alchemy in my alchemy playlist on the channel page. If you guys are looking for those videos, just click on videos or playlists. Okay. Um, Take nothing personal. Exactly. Take nothing personal. That's one thing so many people get messed up behind. <laughs> Stop taking everything personal because it's going to affect you more than it's going to affect them. Okay. The best way to not take something personal is to ask yourself, why did this person do this? What did they have to gain? And would I have done the same thing in their position? 
if the answer is yes, then you can't hold it against them. You know, if the answer is yes, I know why they did it. Then you now you know why, and it alleviates the personal aspect of you know what happened, because now you start to feel sorry for the person. Okay, they did that because they suffer from this, this, and that, and that's why they did it. So why well, am I going to be mad at someone who has an issue or who is suffering? I don't really care what you say or do. I'm not taking it personally because you, as an individual, are not in your right mind or acting out of emotion and whatever you did was not because of me, but because of yourself. So I wouldn't take it personally because they only did it for themselves. Um, so I wouldn't, I'm like, I know why you did it because you're in the position where you're in. Maybe you're in survival mode. Maybe you're jealous. Maybe you're this, maybe you're that, but you know what? That's something only you can solve. I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> I was just the person that you chose you know, to um, project that onto, but I don't take it personally. Uh -huh. <laughs> you said you're an actor, you need to access all your emotions. How do I not lose that for work and also not take things personally in order to create in my purpose? Um, honestly, I feel like I can tap in, I can, I mean, I'm not trying to take anything away from your acting skills, but you can act without emotion. You just have to study what emotion looks like and sounds like. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You got to look, you got to act on what it looks like and sounds like. And maybe transmute those emotions to something more positive. So for example, if you have to act sad, Instead of thinking about someone that you really love or losing them or something to cry, think about something like um, funny instead that will make make you cry. You know, so for example, like think about if someone took a picture of the worst thing in your house and put it on the internet. <laughs> it's funny, but it's sad at the same time. No, like you got a dirty closet or something like that you know, something embarrassing, you know? So I, I would change it around or study people who are acting and look, find what emotion looks like, sounds like, and acts like if you're going through that. And then when you're no longer going through it, then go back to feeling your emotion, okay? So, you know, as within, so without, sometimes you gotta fake it till you make it or until you're, you know, have gone through what you're going through. You gotta study what it looks like. Okay, so study what it looks like and then emulate it. You know how some people do um, impersonations? It's the same thing. Okay. How can you protect your energy in public? Um, okay, so some people feel like protecting your energy in public you have to transmute that with thought. I am energy. I am the energy. And I'm always protected and I don't need protection in public because I am energy. You know, so you have to start thinking the I am divine aspect of it. Why would you need protection if you're divine? I am divine. I am energy. So just think of it like that. If you feel like you need to protect yourself, but if you need a physical help, like if you need physical help to, for your triggers or whatever, choose something that makes you feel protected and then wear it or carry it with you. You know, that's what a lot of people do in magic. They have a magic talisman or a crystal or a stone, or they wear a certain color or whatever, whatever, just to have something to combat, you know, that aspect of it. Or just think of yourself as divine and you don't need no protection because you are energy. And, if you know, blah, 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 blah. Yes. Um, and, you know, when people keep asking you the same questions over and over, like sometimes even though in all of my videos, I always tell people, stop asking me the same questions over and over. Like, am I vegan or vegetarian? And I told you guys, if you ask me that question over and over, it means you're not listening to the first time I answered it. <laughs> 
And so to me, that makes me feel like y'all aren't listening. Okay, that's like me asking you, are you still a meat eater? You still eating that meat? You notice that most people that don't eat meat don't go on people's channels asking them if they still eat meat. <laughs> so, do you still eat meat? Is my answer. There you go. When not taking things personal, what do what do when something you wouldn't have done to them? What? When not taking things personal, what to do when someone did something you wouldn't have done to them? Then dismiss them as a friend because they don't need to, And if you can't understand why they did what they did, dismiss them. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Get over it and move forward and let it be a lesson and a stepping stone to getting your money or to avoiding it for the second time. <clears throat> okay. Nothing's wrong with me, baby. I'm just asking you the same, the same question you asked me. All right. Or someone who asked me that. This is a lot of comments. There's nothing wrong with eating meat. If you don't see nothing wrong with it, then there's nothing wrong with it. And that's another thing that I'm going to tell y'all. If you don't see anything wrong with something that you're doing, then continue to do so. Okay. Because um, that's part of being divine. Free will. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, you said you didn't delete things from your past, but what if you don't relate or recognize your past self and it doesn't apply to you now or in the future? I like to see and watch my growth to, to who I was, to who I am. Because if you forget who you were, you might forget who you are. And then if you forget who you are, you might forget who you're becoming. So I like to keep all my old stuff up and watch my transformation from the beginning to now. Because I'm not ashamed of who I am, what I represented, what I said, how I looked or anything. Because that was part of who I am and part of what made me who I am today. Even if I don't still have the same, you know, thinking, it's what got me here. And so I appreciate it. And I'm not ashamed of it. And I don't try to erase what has been done. Because some people might need to see that and see your growth in order to be inspired to the next level as well. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you see a lot of these people who have ran back to the church. Well, you know, it doesn't even matter because they're still going to find a way to get paid off of it. And some people fake run back to the church to get paid. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all. Some people will fake running back to the church in order for the church to give them some money to represent them. So you'll see a lot of people on YouTube uh, doing these interviews with these Christian channels and they're getting paid. They're getting people to their channel. Talk about, oh, I was a witch or I was in the occult. And then I turned to Jesus and I'm going to tell my story. And here go my book. You know, people are still finding a way to get paid. <laughs> okay. So, you know, if you're going to run back, get paid at least. Okay. Get paid. And then you're still, you know, they're still going to be like, are you really a believer? No, but I'm a receiver. Give me my money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And a lot of people will say, well, would you ever go back to church? It's the only way you're going to catch me in a church is the wedding and the funeral or if I'm the first lady collecting the building fund. Yes. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You know why? Because I, you know, I'm going to exploit what exploits other people, especially a church. <laughs> so if you see me in there, you know, I ain't up to no good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he said do your thing black china yeah some people do what they think is going to get them more money and they're going to use that platform to get paid and then they can go right back to what they were doing after they get that you know that church money and they can be gone they do something bad the church was like oh you don't represent us anymore good because i really didn't represent you in the first place i was just getting some money <laughs> So a lot of people don't care as long as they have a popular person going back to Christianity to try to fuel, you know, the old cycle that's cycling out. Uh, it's fine. But as long as you're smart about it and get your money and then move on, you know, because some people going to go back and get their money 
come here, get their money and go forward getting their money. OK, that's really smart. If you can get your money from three different angles. OK, I'm going to pretend to go back to the church and get their money. Then I'm going to transition back into my own thinking. And then I'm going to transfer into my goddess divinehood and I'm going to get paid three ways. <laughs> ah, so I'm going to get the building fund. I'm going to start my own business and it's going to grow and I'm going to grow into, you know, mogul uh, afterwards. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's what Kanye did. All right. If you smart, you know how to get it from different ways. <laughs> Okay. You see that was marketing for her hair company? Exactly. Get your money every which way. Um, how do you transmute jealousy and nosiness from people? Give them something to really be jealous about. Make them super jealous. So there's two jealousy to say nothing because they know you don't know they're jealous. <laughs> like if they try to say something, everybody going to be like, you must be jealous, you know, or just don't care. At least it's not the other way around. At least you ain't jealous of them. Just be like, oh, I'm so glad I'm not you. <laughs> I am so glad that I am not jealous of someone. It must be a bad feeling. <laughs> you know, so just think of it like that. I, I wouldn't care. Like, you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way, but, you know. I am who I am and I can't help it. All right. <laughs> That's how you have to think. Okay. Who cares if people are jealous of you? They're supposed to be if you're doing it right. If nobody jealous of you, you ain't doing nothing. Think about the people you're not jealous of. They don't impact your life. They don't make you feel some sort of way. They just exist. And they're pretty much neutral to you, right? But if you think about something that you, somebody or something that you're jealous of, it makes you look within as to why you're not where you think you should be. And you keep comparing yourself or you fear losing behind that person or that that person is your competition or your threat or whatever. Then that means you need to get, get to working on yourself to improve who you are. So maybe they just need to mirror and figure themselves out because like jealousy doesn't exist. It's only them not fulfilled with themselves. Okay, so they just not fulfilled with themselves, and so maybe they'll figure it out. And if I'm their inspiration to trigger that within them, then they have, you know, they're gonna have a good future. <laughs> so I did my part. All right, so that's another way to transmute it. Like I, I'm glad that I'm your role model to be jealous from. I'm glad that I am the trigger for you to do better in life. And I know since I am your trigger, you're going to do well. So if you just put in that work and put that energy towards yourself instead of towards me, you're going to get somewhere. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So I, I feel like that's what it is. And I don't really care. And people don't affect me in that way. And they shouldn't affect you guys. Okay. Just look at them as like children. That's the best way to do it. Look at them as, like, as children. They don't know any better. And that means your awareness is bigger than theirs. And your knowledge is, and your wisdom is too. So you can't really blame someone that's ignorant or don't know any better until they figure it out. Okay. It's like, I'm sorry you're that ignorant, but you'll figure that. You say this in your own mind. You don't have to be super mean to people. You're just like, okay, well, you know, it's not my problem. That's yours. Unless you let people being jealous of you become your problem because you took it on as a problem, that was your own free will. But literally, if someone is jealous of you, that is literally only their problem. It is not yours. So don't make it yours. Okay? Do not make it your problem. Um, there, was one, there was some show where this girl's friend was jealous of her getting into college or something like that. Or having someone come and look at her, you know, play sports so she could get a scholarship. And so the girl who's up for the scholarship messed up on purpose because her friend was jealous and she didn't want to lose that friendship. I'm like, that's dumb. <laughs> you know, so you can't allow people's jealousy to affect you at all. Otherwise you're going to fall behind worrying about something that's not even about you. You're just their inspiration secretly. That's it. Okay. 
Um, and you'll have to get out of y'all's emotion. Your emotions do not lead you somewhere that is super profitable because you're living in a temporary feeling and you're making lifelong decisions based on temporary feelings, okay? You're making lifelong decisions, permanent decisions on temporary feelings. So you need to override those emotions and think about what's best for you in your future. You can use a little bit of the emotion, but don't totally rely on your emotions to make lifelong decisions. So for example, if you feel like, okay, well, I use this example on my other channel a lot and some people get mad, but people say, women say, well, I'm with this guy. He had potential when I met him and now he's not doing much in life. Do I leave or do I stay? Okay. You've given him this long. He hasn't even tried to get to his potential. You going to stay another five years and find out, or are you going to go and figure it out on your own and do what you got to do and move on? <laughs> you know, it's up to you. But I love him. Do you love yourself, though? That's the question. Do you love him more than you to sacrifice what you're doing and where you're going in life? Or do you love yourself more? And does he love you enough to meet his potential so he can do right by you? The answer is nope, nope, and maybe. So you love him. He probably doesn't love you as much if he's not reaching his potential for you. And you don't love yourself enough to remove yourself from the situation. So love yourself first, do what's best for you first. If he wanna change and you are his motivation because you left, then he will get up off the couch, put down the remote control to the video game and he will go get you back by reaching his potential, okay? That's how that works. Don't allow people to impede your path because of emotion. Okay. Yeah. What about with envy and sabotage or the women that want to hurt you over their envy? Um, no one can hurt me. They can only boost me and fuel me to my next success. Because whatever, you know how to say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So whatever they're doing is going to literally manifest back into my favor and bring me money. Think about it like that. Okay. No matter what people do is always going to bring you some money. That's why like, even if even channels that talk trash about certain people, it still brings them buzz. It still brings them views. It still brings them money. Okay. They say like all press is good press. <laughs> Remember that. It means you're going to get money. Your attention, attention is going to go towards you. Now, how you transmute that attention is up to you. Mm -hmm. No one can sabotage me because I can, I can transmute things. You transmute the sabotage into your favor. Or believe that it will naturally be transmuted in some way, some form. Subconsciously. And it will be. Okay? Uh, there you go. So get your money and make sure that you don't l allow other people to intimidate you or put fear into you or make you feel like, you know, they're uh, trying to sabotage you. Let them go ahead and do it because it's going to only work out in your favor. Let them complete the task so you can get your money. <laughs> Be like, y'all need some help. <laughs> so we need to get the thing rolling if I'm going to get my money in time or when I need it. So y'all go ahead and put on the sabotage to get it rolling so I can get my money because it's only going to transmute. Then they'll be like, you want to help us sabotage you? That's not fun anymore. <laughs> right? I'm going away. I'm going to go find someone else to sabotage. Okay, bye. Have fun. You know, so think of it that way. Don't take nothing personal. Take it as a compliment. If you take everything as a compliment, it's only going to boost your self-esteem even further and your frequency. Okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. That's nice. 
glad it's you and not me because I'll be feeling very bad about myself. If I'm going to put in all that work for a whole other person without no money. Like you working hard day and night to sabotage somebody and ain't even getting paid. That's dumb. <laughs> right? What if it's spiritual sabotage? You, you, your spirit can transmute into whatever you need it to. So if they try to spiritually sabotage you, it's always going to still work back into your favor. If you say so, say, if say, you know, anything that's against me is always going to profit me and turn out for my best interest and ongoing best interest interest. And that's it. So, you know, the more people come at you and, and the more they see you become successful, they're just going to stop because they can't, they can't really phase you. There's nothing they're going to be able to do about it. And if you gather a lot of people that are on your side and believe what you're doing, believe in what you're doing, you don't even have to say anything. Look at the beehive. <laughs> if somebody say a word about Beyonce, they come and fall, period. You know, saying certain things can end your whole career if no weapon are form formed against you can prosper. You know what I'm saying? So the people that start to open their mouth about certain things starts to think twice when they only see you rising. So think about it. Mm -hmm. What do you think about therapists saying you have magical thinking? It's a compliment. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Your spirit can be what you want it to be. Can you expand that? If you want your spirit to be transmuting into profit, giving you ideas to profit you from people attacking you. So, for example, if you're getting spiritually attacked, let's say this hand is the transmutation device. So here's bad spiritual sabotage. When it hits this and goes through it, trying to get to you, it automatically transmutes into money, positivity, and whatever it is you need in your life. So it's literally an air filter or a water filter. Think about it as a water filter or an air filter. Okay. A spiritual filter. I got a spiritual filter. Whatever you throw at me is going to give me some money. So keep throwing it, baby. I got a water filter. You got an air filter. You got a spiritual filter. Get your money. Okay. <laughs> so in your mind, in your mental, in your create creation in this universe, anything against you is going to get you paid. And so when people see that, that you've done that, they, the more they throw against you, the more they're helping you. It's like they're literally helping you. And the best thing to do is to stop. Okay. Do you get the water filter by praying and meditating? No, you just think about it. Just say that it is and that it is. The power of the word is very easy. I have a spiritual filter. You throw something negative at me, it's going to turn into money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's all you got to do. Say it. Say it and mean it and feel it and don't doubt it. And part of that is having confidence and being in your divine. Okay. Um. Here you go. You got to pray and meditate and all that kind of stuff. That, if that's what you like to do, great. But I just say it and it is. All right. Uh, would you mind if someone has a doll of you? They got a doll of Barbie, Beyonce, Brianna, RuPaul. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got dolls of a lot of people for sale. And it probably, they probably got paid off of it, too. And if they didn't, oh, well, you know, some people make them without uh, including the artist. But I feel like if someone has a doll of you, then that's their own thinking. You know, if, if, if you like to have a doll of someone, if you're trying to do magic on someone because you got a doll of them, in your mind, great. But if the other person is spiritually, um, you know, able to transmute negative energy, then it's not going to have any effect at all. It might, it might just, you know, make the other person mad enough to you know, say something stupid and bring you attention and get you paid too. You know what I'm saying? All right. How to create your own downfall to boost up you up like a pendulum? Create it just like the celebrities do. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Fake something. <laughs> Fake it till you make it, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Fake something. Lie about something. Fake scandal. Something. Um. Uh, 
What if you're not scared of death, but scared of being in a violent way, hindering life anyway? If you're scared of being in a violent way, okay. So if you're scared of your ability to be violent towards something or someone, then you need to control your emotion. You need to work on controlling yourself. It's called self-discipline. Whatever makes you angry, you need to realize that like, if you want to be violent, then you need to get a punching bag. You need to go work out and run around. You need to channel your anger or your energy towards something productive. You know what I'm saying? So channel it to something productive or transmute that violence and that energy into uh, getting paid. Maybe go join, um, you know, some type of fighting competition thing. Okay. Fight club, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Fight club. Get your money. What's the best good spell to manifest money or good luck? Um, anything that you do that you believe that's going to work. Okay. It could be very simple. You could carry a stone that attracts money. You can start a money bowl. You can burn a candle. Whatever you feel is going to work, as long as you know it's going to work, it will. Okay, you had a dream you was being called to join some woman in white. The call out of your name was a loud echo. And when I woke up, I couldn't move about five minutes. It was scary. How do I deal with it? Um, I never really, I'm afraid of anything in my dream because I know that's all coming from within me. And if it's, if, uh, and if it's not, it's not scary to me anyway. But I just try to decode it. Decode your dreams. Decode the symbols in your dreams. If you have sleep paralysis, it's because your astral body didn't return to your physical body when your consciousness awoke. Okay. It's literally just science. So it's like your astral body wasn't completely back into your physical body and you were trying to move and you couldn't. It's that simple. Stop. Like if you learn about stuff, you fear it a lot less. So research the symbols in your dream and understand that not being able to move is because you're not physically back in your body when you're uh, when you awake all right um can i tell you what it felt like when things were against me it worked out for you i was laughing at a lot of stuff um i feel like t the 20s are a period of uncertainty however this could be a limiting belief um, your 20s are to have fun and to learn a lot of things <laughs> as well. Uh, I also think that anything against you, you're supposed to turn it for you. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's for, to turn it into your favor, like a magician. You turn things like an alchemist, turn lead into gold. If you're not doing that, start. Thank you, God, is why we're at your sprinkle sprinkle. And I think maybe in your 30s, you're going to learn that if you haven't learned it in your 20s. Um, I don't know if you mind or not. So I left her in the strong. Uh, uh. Okay. What are your thoughts on conflicting beliefs? Believe what you need to believe when you need to believe it. Sprinkle, sprinkle, because um, belief or truth is only perspective. Okay, so believe what you need at the time you need to believe it. If you don't need to believe it tomorrow because you're trying to do something else, then believe something different. If somebody is in your presence who believes something that you don't believe in, then just say, I agree to disagree or everyone has their own opinion. Everyone has their own beliefs. That's wonderful that you have a belief system, but I choose this way of believing instead. If you can't be in peace with that, you must doubt your own belief. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If someone is, has a problem with your belief, they doubt theirs. Just think about it like that. <laughs> oh, the you were goddess. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Appreciate that. So, if someone has a, like, I, like most spiritual people don't go around upset at people for what they believe because we don't care. Believe what you want, whatever. But people that have a problem with their own belief, they have a problem with your belief because if you believe something and it's working for you and they believe something that's not working for them, they don't like that 
your belief is working for you, but theirs is not working for them. So they want to bring you over to their belief that don't work because <sighs> they're scared to go over to yours. Okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's exactly what it is. I'm scared. You come back over here. You, you doing too much. You come back over here. You're doing too much. You're getting too much money with that belief. And I'm scared to go over there. So you come back over here. Nope. You stay over there. Bye. <laughs> Do you believe in therapists? I believe in if they get any money, I believe in them. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Everybody got to get paid. Uh, do you believe in the universe? You, if you are the universe, you believe in yourself. You do what you want. You know. So you got to believe what you want when you want. You got to believe in pe what people believe in. If they're getting their money, that's what they're believing in, then and that's getting them paid. Then so be it. You know, if I was a therapist, I would believe in a therapist because <laughs> I know I'm going to be getting paid. All right. So that's what I mean by believing in what you need to believe in at the time. If you don't believe that you're enough and you are the prize, should you go to? No, you just need to believe. You just need to know. You have to make yourself into feeling like a prize. You know, no therapy can nothing outside of yourself can tell you. You have to just feel it. You have to know. They may repeat it to you. You are the prize. You are the prize. But until you believe it, they're just yelling at you and telling you, you know, you have to decide. It is free will to decide if you are a prize or not. Period. You got to decide. Are you a prize or are you not? That's it. That's that simple. And when you start saying, yes, I am, then you're going to start acting like it. Either you know or you don't. It's that simple. If you don't know, then that was your choice not to know. But when you figure it out and then you figure it out, yes, I am or no, I'm not. Then that's where you go forward. Everything is your choice. Uh oh, thank you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Appreciate you. Um, so you choose. No one can choose that for you. No one can tell you. That would be like, I don't know if I'm the president of the United States or not. I need to go th to therapy to see if someone is going to tell me that I'm the United States president. <laughs> you know, I'm not the president. You don't have to go to therapy to, for y'all to figure that out. OK. And it's, uh, am I the prize? No, I don't need to go to therapy to figure out if I'm the prize. I already know. There you go. It's, that, it's like that. So just decide and you are. What would someone who believes they are the prize do? Act like the prize? Have high standards like a prize? Don't take no BS like a prize? Okay. Don't, don't deal with no more dusties like a prize? Never pay on a date like a prize? Never going 50-50 like a prize? Okay. That's what you will do. That's what you'll start to do. Um, it's almost like if someone told you you had an illness. And these are the steps you have to take. Or these are the symptoms of your illness. You're going to either create them or you're going to follow the steps, right? So if somebody tells you something, then you oh, okay, I'm going to listen to I'm going to follow these steps. I'm going to follow these steps. So tell yourself I'm the prize and then follow the steps to, to be the prize. That's it. <laughs> you said, I don't have a president. Exactly. So decide and just be. That's it. How do you recondition yourself? By deciding one day and living that way for the rest of your life. Just like a trans person would. They, you know what? I don't, I don't identify with this gender no more, so I'm going to switch it. And they keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? So trans, transcend your old self into your new self. Okay? Transition into your new self. And just decide today and just be done. Only make decisions that get you to the next level and not to where you don't want to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
it's not that hard. You just have to do the work and have to decide. I can't, I'm not this person no more and I'm this person. I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> um, we're supposed to transition and change into something better, into more divine. So just choose to and you will be. Um, it's not a whole process. It's just a, a decision. That's, that's literally it, a decision. Um, so, you know, when you're going against, when you're feeling all this, like if people are against you and you feel like you're being spiritually attacked or you're, you feel like people are bothering you or triggering you, just ignore them or make yourself laugh with them and transmute all that energy into money. Okay. And there's nothing to fear because it's only your choice to let those type of things interfere with what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Or what you're trying to, how you're trying to feel. Okay. Uh huh. You said, what is it? Okay. Thank you, Venus. Sprinkle, sprinkle. What does it mean when you show women that frequency? They always scream. They never had it. Are they lying? I don't know what frequency that is, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. What frequency are you speaking of? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It, the mind is very powerful. You just choose a path and, and go on it. That's literally it. Okay. Can you say something like transmute all my failures into success during spell work? Yeah. Because all your failures lead to success anyway. But if you need to say it out loud, then say it out loud. You know, all a lot of the great minds failed time after time, thousands of times until they got success. So that's just a given. You know, it's a given. You don't fail until you quit. You don't ever fail until you quit. Okay. So you could say that if it, if it makes you believe it even more and feel it and vibrate it even more. Definitely. Can you use a lottery ticket that didn't win for a money spell? Why would you use a lottery ticket that didn't win, girl? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Why don't you get a fake lottery ticket that did win? Fake it till you make it. They sell them at the Dollar Tree. Or they used to, or you can order them online as a prank. There's like these prank lottery tickets that win. I did a prank on James one time to see what he was going to do. My, James is my husband. So me and the kids bought these fake lottery tickets that win. It's like a scratch off. It was hilarious. I don't know if it's on this channel or my other channel. It was an old video, but I, I said, James, I bought some lottery tickets. Will you help me scratch them? Because there's like four of them. And I said, okay, the kids are going to scratch these. I'm going to scratch this one. You scratch this one, okay? And so they all were winners, but we were, we were pretending like ours didn't win. And he didn't know anything because he don't buy lottery tickets, so he can't tell if it's real or not because they look real. So he was scratching on it. It won, right? And I was like, did it win? He's like, I, I think so. I said, let me see. I said, oh, my God, it won. <gasps> Oh my God, girl, he snatched that ticket right out my hand and said, oh, I won. And I was like, this is my ticket. I bought it. He said, but I scratched it. <laughs> ah, it was hilarious. I said, no, but it's mine. I paid for it. He said, well, I pay for you. <laughs> I pay all the bills. So this is literally my money because I paid for you and you paid for the ticket. And so I was like, fine, you can keep it then. He said, I was going to. I say, and guess what? It's fake. Ha, 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 ha. Then he got mad and threw it in the trash. <laughs> and then the kids started laughing and I started laughing. He started laughing. I said, mm-hmm. I never asked you to scratch no ticket if I ever buy a real one ever. Gotcha. So get you the fake lottery tickets, girl, and scratch one off and feel like the feeling it would feel like to win. Yeah, you could, I think you can order them online somewhere. Probably Amazon got them or something. Um, what the Christian Barbie, what? A Barbie Christian? What the heck is that? 
Uh-huh. Okay, let me see what y'all are talking about over here. <sighs> Scroll a Barbie Christian. Okay. She wants to look like a Christian Barbie. Who wants to look like a Christian Barbie? Oh, you talk about uh I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. What she got what she got on? What the, what the Christian Barbie wear? Okay, um, I have no idea which they got that. The church? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds funny. <laughs> it sounds like it might collect a lot of building fund money. Okay. Um, imagine a new church called Christian Barbie. Yes. <laughs> it's gonna be all pink and stuff do you believe in changing facial features using the power of belief i want to look like a barbie um they got masks now you can just go get you a silicone mask for about a couple thousand dollars on amazon and you can put it on your face it'll look real um yes or you can use makeup and contour if you're good at makeup. Okay. And they have these really talented makeup artists that can make themselves look like other people too. So maybe just get you some makeup lessons or get you a mask. Because if you try to change your facial features by just thinking about it, I mean, that has to override your DNA and your bone structure. And if you can't make stuff move with your mind or you can't manifest a million dollars, it's, it's going to be very hard to change your facial features through bone structure, DNA, just with your thinking. You know what I'm saying? So uh, is your is, is your ability to manifest that powerful yet? So you just kind of think about it like that. Or use makeup. That's what it's for. <laughs> All right, just use makeup. And I think if you use makeup, it will help help you manifest because you can see it. You can see the transformation through the makeup, which will allow you to believe that it's more possible. So yes. Okay. I mean, it might work because like, okay, honestly, a lot of people who use filters for photos and they really start to think they look that way, right? And their skin starts improving because they walk around in the frequency of I have perfect skin. I, my skin look good. Look, at, look how flawless I am. So you have to train yourself by with a visual trainer, perhaps. So maybe just get you a Barbie filter or do your makeup like a Barbie until you start changing it because you're in the frequency of it um so a visual help a visual tool will help you okay how do you stay in the divine after waking up when i woke up i'm in the default setting how do you keep your mind focused on not regret the beauty about being divine is that you are able to go into multiple dimensions when you feel like it and when you don't you have access to your divinity as well as your humanity. So if you regress, you can't really regress if you've already become divine. You know what I'm saying? If you're divine, you're divine, period, done. You've reached that apex of divinity. If you want to come back down to your humanity, then you can, and then you can go right back up to your divinity because you've always been that because that's what you reached. So. It's kind of like um, erasing your old videos and not going back to see, like on my channel, I have all my old videos, but if I had deleted them and stayed with only, you know, what I'm putting out for this year, then I wouldn't be able to go back and see all of those things and see how far I've come. And it won't give me inspiration to go even further. So you have to see how far you've come, how far you can keep going and how you can regress and come right back like it's nothing, okay?
Uh, so don't don't think that you're supposed to stay in one position because you're not. You're supposed to get there and go wherever you want after that. Okay, it's like it's like trying to um, do something. Like, let's say you have a. What's a good example of that? It's like you get rich, and you know you have a nice house, you have cars, everything you want, right? But your, you know, you, you, your friends and your favorite places to eat are in a neighborhood that's lesser than yours. But you're still going to go eat there. You're still going to go visit people, right? It doesn't mean you're back there. It just means you're there temporarily and you'll be back to where you need to be. All right. That's the best scenario I could think of at the time. He mm. said, so why are you so emotional at this time? You don't know why? Maybe you need a focus that takes your mind off the emotion. So what I learned to do is read and study during an emotional issue or an emotional time. So get you a book or something to study when you start to feel that way and learn something. Instead, it's going to take your mind totally from emotion to logic or to learning. And you're literally just transmuting that emotion and that energy into learning. Okay. And your mind will totally be off whatever it is because now you're you know, learning something interesting. But make sure you learn something you actually want to learn. <laughs> okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You said you just got great news. Your transmutation works. Yes. Um, Shira, a man of means is coming to your house as a student. Last time he wanted to sleep with me and I turn him down. How can I get money from him? This is the wrong channel, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Y'all need to go watch what y'all click on before in the title and the channel before y'all ask y'all questions. But, you know, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Okay. Use your feminine, divine feminine mind, baby. Um, Women have so much power, yet not all use it or know their own value. Exactly. That's because people have devalued a lot of people, and especially women, for so long that they forgot who they were. So you have to remember that you are divine and walk in that divinity. Um, mm -hmm. Get your... Um... All right, so... <laughs> how to transmute high sexual energy into money um find something constructive to do and transmute that energy into creating something or some type of work or creative creative idea that's going to earn you money a lot of the a lot of the people used to do that they would um be celibate because they would use that energy or transmute that energy into creation or to creating something it could be art science a project, business. So just transmute it into something that is profitable. Um, a lot of people do that. Eh. What helped you find your hobby and your passion? What I'm passionate about, I need a hobby. Uh, go back to your childhood and what, whatever you like doing then, you probably like doing now as an adult. So go back to your childhood memories and say, well, what did I like to do back in the old days when I was a child? And then that's probably what you're going to like to do as an adult as well, but on a grander scale with money now. <laughs> Just showing love. You've helped me realize my worth in several different ways. Uh oh, thank you, Jerry. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I appreciate you. All my, all my talents and skills and hobbies and things that I, and things that I'm passionate about are things from my childhood. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, things that were fun, things that were creative and interesting to me. How can you transmute an intense curse or hex? Think of it as so intense that it's a blessing. So intense that it's um, a prosperity spell towards you. It's so bad, it's good, baby. You know, if you're going to believe in a hex, believe that you can transmute that into the exact opposite, which is a blessing and prosperity. Okay? 
You have to take the power in your own hand or else you're putting someone else above you. Okay. So for example, if you give someone power over you by believing in whatever hex was sent, then now you are not divine. Your thinking is no longer divine. So you have to remember who you are. You said, uh, Shira, a friend of mine believes Jesus will. Jesus will what? <laughs> uh, okay. First step, don't believe in it. Yeah, exactly. It only gives, It's only powerful if you believe it's powerful. Okay. Let me ask you a question. If a weak person came up to you that you don't respect, told you something about your future, would you believe them? If, if a weak, broke, dusty person came up to you and said, I curse you, are you going to take that seriously? <sighs> Think of it like that. Ashira, a friend of mine will come back, LOL. A friend of yours? Okay. Well, I don't know what that means, but sprinkle, sprinkle. Hey, Shira, how would... How would you suggest balance the work of multiple businesses and passions as a single mom? Um, make them very easy, yet profitable. So less time consuming, more profitable. Sit in a room, think about how you can make the most money from doing the least work. That's how. Sprinkle, sprinkle. The easiest way to make money, figure it out to where you don't have to do a lot of things or schedule it around being a mom. So where it doesn't interfere with you being a mom. Okay. The key is not giving your power away, but what is already manifesting as a health issue physically. Um, first of all, in my opinion, I don't believe in anything that a doctor tells me unless I'm in the emergency room and I can see it on an X-ray, okay? or I already felt the symptoms prior to whatever. I don't believe doctors at all. If, if you go to the doctor and they looking for something, they're going to find it because it's going to pay them. So first of all, I will go get a second, third and fourth opinion and I will go to an Eastern medicine doctor as well. I don't believe in doctors, but if you got proof of whatever it is that's wrong with you, then um, I would definitely start manifesting it away and doing whatever health, health thing wise that I need to do, you know? And I would also live in the vibe, in the vibration of preventing anything. So if you're not sick now, then live in the vibration of preventing things or never occurring. Um, and in the future, if you, you know, when you, if you cure whatever it is, live in the vibration of prevention, not treating, not treatment, but prevention. That's the difference between Eastern medicine and Western medicine. They prevent and we treat and sometimes it'd be too late. So Live in prevention mode, not treatment mode. And don't believe, it's like if you go to the doctor and nothing was wrong with you and then you go get a test and all of a sudden something wrong with you, you are the chosen one, ma'am. <laughs> they chose you to give you something, okay? I don't believe in doctors. Unless I'm in the emergency room and something broke and they need to sew it up or fix it up, I'm not, I'm not going to get something, okay? You about to go to work, just want to say thanks for all you do. You drop so much knowledge and you're funny anyway. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, Letha. Sprinkle, sprinkle, girl. So, yeah. So don't ask me about the doctors because y'all that y'all can get the same answer every time. <laughs> can you control the timing of your manifestation? You used to take two years, but now you manifest in months. Yeah, because the frequency is higher and you have less doubt about your ability to manifest. Okay, so it's going to get easier each time when your manifestations manifest. How, what helps you to remember what you like to do as a child? Yeah, you got to remember. Take yourself back there mentally. Okay, take the time to revisit your childhood mentally because that's, that's what a lot of people forget. You lose your inner child. And that's why a lot of times people can't figure themselves out because they lost their inner child. So you need to go back and find it. Okay, maybe look through some old photos, ask your mom, something. All right. 
You say you love your inner child? Yes. Connect with your inner child. You say you own a spiritual. It's sure. Is it on spiritual tack if some people we don't like pop up in our dream? No. Like, honestly, if you popping up in my dreams and I don't like you or something like that, it doesn't bother me because like maybe you're just, maybe you have a subliminal thought about someone that doesn't like you and it's coming up in your dreams. Um, I don't think it's spiritual attack because I mean, it's just a thought, right? It's like if, you, if there's someone, there's a song on the radio that you don't like if you if you don't like it, it's not a spiritual attack. It's just a song you don't like. Uh oh, angelic goddess. I meant a friend of mine believes Jesus will come back. We usually talk about it, but not going to convince her otherwise. Girl, sprinkle, sprinkle. Come back where and do what? That's what you need to ask her. Come back where and do what? What country he coming to? And what he here to do? What language he going to speak? What color he going to be? Is he going to be rich or broke? Is this coming in a spaceship or on a cloud? <laughs> All right. Ask, ask her the dumb questions. Because uh, he didn't speak no English when the last time he left it. You know, so he didn't speak English. He didn't come to America. So where he going to appear? In the Middle East? They already made a movie like that. Nobody believed him for a short period of time. He got a social media following and got paid and then left. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <sighs> if you're going to come back, get you, make sure he got social media so he can get paid. All right. <laughs> Y'all hook Jesus up and get him his money so he can go. Well. <laughs> All right. And tell him to watch out for the government because they're probably going to try to capture him too. Mm. Okay. How do you stop dreaming about certain people? Say, I'm not going to dream. Say, you're going to dream about something else instead. Like, I'm going to dream about how I'm, you know, this other person. Replace them with someone else or replace them with dreaming of something else. Tell yourself that every night until you do. You just program your subconsciousness. Um, say, I'm going to dream of this person tonight and keep saying that until the other person is not in your dream. Um, you met a man who has a super firewall of protection around him. Anytime I do work, I feel that fiery wall. What can I do to build a similar, use your imagination, sprinkle, sprinkle. Imagine it's there and it's there. That's that simple. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Imagine it's there and it's there. There you go. Thank you for the donation. Um, You say you're supposed to get over the dead and the ghosts. How are you still waiting for Jesus to come back? Is he going to reincarnate? Yes. He might have already reincarnated and died again and came back again and came back and died and came back. Or he might have been here 18,000 million times already. Maybe he coming back through a baby that's being born right now. <laughs> who knows and who cares? Okay. Then that means other people are also coming back too. If, if he exists, then that means everybody that didn't die are also coming back. He just in the wheel of reincarnation. Okay. So, and what? It's, you know, everybody coming back. How you doing? <laughs> you said, do you believe in tarot cards or is it self persuasion? Tarot cards is not a permanent path. It's, the path that you're currently on is where you could end up if you don't change course. So it's not fixed. It's like, like I said earlier, going to the doctor and they say, okay, if you don't do this, then this is what's going to happen. So, okay, well, I don't want that to happen. So guess what? I'm going to do this. Uh, if you don't uh, eat more vegetables, 
then you're going to head down this path and that's what's going to happen to you. Okay, well, I guess I'll eat more vegetables so I don't have to go down that path. So it's like that. You still have the control. Okay? You always have the control. If anything takes your control away, it's not useful to you. Okay? If anything takes the power out of your own hand and takes control from you, then you need to figure out how to get it back. Okay? Okay. And yeah, so we don't look outside of ourselves if you're divine. If you're divine, then you can do whatever you need to do to get to where you need to go. Okay. Uh, how can you keep your energy up and you get Drain during celestial shifts like eclipses. You, you can keep your energy up during those times. PS. Stop paying attention to the to what's going on. OK, if you don't know, then you're not going to be triggered to lose energy. And if you if you don't want to not avoid knowing what's happening, then do so, like take coffee. Get you an energy drink. A natural smoothie if you don't do energy drinks. Drink you some coffee at that time. Take some vitamins. Get you some B12 shots, you know. I mean, those things are easy to do. <laughs> um, but don't pay, don't pay the events any mind if they're going to trigger you to think that you're losing energy. What's your opinion on people telling that by doing blood magic, you will you sell your soul or create karmic ties and debt with entities? Um I, if you don't believe it, you don't believe it. You know what I'm saying? So if you do blood work and if, you know, it, who are you selling your soul to and how much money did you get for it? And where's the receipt? You know? Uh, and who are these entities, baby? And what if you didn't know you was doing blood magic, but you just uh, cut your hand by accident? Is this still the same thing? You see what I'm saying? So honestly, it's literally up to you to believe or not to believe. So if you say, oh my gosh, I believe that. And so now you're going to start vibrating that and you're going to live as if that's the truth. And so your path is going to be very different in life. You're going to be vibrating very different. So if you don't believe it, you'd be like, yeah, right, whatever. I do what I want and don't believe it. Then it doesn't never affect you. Okay. So it's up to you as an individual to believe it or not, that is your choice and your free will. I can tell you anything and it is up to you to believe it or not. Just like people can tell you anything. If they can control you psychologically by telling you what to believe, then they can control you. If you dismiss whatever they just told you, they have no control over you and you do what you want, literally. So like, where's my receipt then? I didn't sign no paper. I didn't even have a chance to leave a tip. Where's my receipt? Who, who are these people that I sold it to? I, don't you think I would know their name? Don't you think I would know the entity's name? Don't you think I would have a receipt? Don't you think it would cost, you know, I would have got some money or something? You know, <sighs> so all these questions need to be answered. When in doubt, start asking dumb questions and you'll laugh at yourself. Okay. <laughs> Just like the Jesus question. Well, what country he coming back to? He going to come back rich or poor? What, what color he going to be? Is the government going to get him? You know, start asking dumb questions when people tell you dumb things. Okay. You transmute it by laughing at it. Okay. It's like, whatever. Y'all are stupid. Well, where are my receipt then? Because I always get my receipts and I ain't got no receipt. Okay. Um, you said, what's the asking price for your soul? I don't know, because nobody ever told a price. Nobody ever asked to buy it, and so so forth and so on. I never see no ad in the paper for it. I never see no ads online. It ain't even on Craigslist. So I don't know how I could get in touch with somebody to sell my soul if nobody's soliciting <laughs> or trying to buy. Okay? Dumb. <sighs> yep. Yeah, my ex just, so, you know, whatever. Like, believe what you want. That is your free will. Fake news, like Donald Trump say, fake news. Um, 
maybe okay and here's another way i transmuted that the soul thing okay let me if y'all if y'all can't transmute it as easy as i can i'm gonna tell y'all a funny way to transmute it so let's say you say you, you let's say you believe you sold your soul to some entities or to the devil or whatever In my book, look, shameless plug, in my book, which links at the top of the um, chat right there, how to manifest with magic and dark cosmic energy. You become source. You become God. You become the devil. You become the universe. You become the multiverse. You become the omniverse. So you sold yourself back to yourself because you are all and everything. You everything at all at the same time. So if you sell your soul to anything, you sold it back to yourself literally. All you did was gave your soul back to yourself and paid yourself. You made change with yourself, basically. Okay. You, you, you handed yourself $5 and your other self handed you five ones. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. Mentalism, magic, transmutation. I am all, I am source, I am universe, I am the omniverse, I am the multiverse, I am all entities, I am all everything, I am human, I am divine, I'm everything. So if I sell my soul to something, I sold it back to myself, I just made change. Okay, so here you go a five, give me five ones. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Didn't lose a beat, didn't keep, keep, skip a step, and I still got what I wanted. Then you go over to some dumb people. And you tell them the one is a five. <laughs> uh, so you have to be smart. You have to have knowledge. You can't, you have to think outside the box because that's the whole point of fear to keep you in a box, to keep you from being divine, to keep you from transmuting stupid stuff into profitable things. So yeah, I sold myself. You, you can like, if you think you sold your soul just say, yeah, I sold it back to myself. I made change, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> I make change. How to not care about the opinions of other. Or how to not care about others' opinions about you. I feel like I am people pleasing. So when I'm well known, it won't ruin my reputation and network. You know, I think it's the opposite. I think you need to not care what people think. And when you're well known, you you won't have to care what they think still. Because if you're well known and you have to care what people think, people can people can handle you, literally. People can handle you if you don't if you care. So for example, if you work your if you work on not creating, you know, issues and being a people pleaser so that when you get to a certain level, people aren't offended by you. But then they can handle you. You know, if you are outspoken and do what you want, no one can handle you when you get to that level. You know what I'm saying? That's what a lot of celebrities go through. They worry about their reputation. They try to people please. They try to be politically correct. And then when they get to a certain position, they can't even be themselves. They can't even have freedom of speech. They can't say nothing because they put themselves in a box. But when you say what you want and do what you want and you get there anyway, then you don't have to please anyone. You know, so be who you are. And stop worrying about what people think because you're putting yourself in a trap to be a slave to what them people think. Okay. And you're not going to be successful or feel successful if you feel like you're trapped and people are handling you. Mm -hmm. So be outspoken and say what you want. And if they don't like you, they don't like you. <laughs> And if you're if you're not saying what you want, then you're not being who you are. And so they don't like you anyway. Think about it like that. Um, and there I know plenty of people like that or I've seen plenty of people like that. Like they have to be very careful of what they say because they're in a certain position. And then they never end up being able to say what they say. And even if they want to say what they say in private, somebody always listening and then going to transfer the information back anyway. <coughs> so say what you want to say now so you don't have to bite your tongue in the future. OK. <coughs> and stop caring. If people like you, they don't like you. They don't. They don't. All right. I got to go in a few minutes. You know, I think about like this. 
there are people that got to where they want really fast by people pleasing and being politically correct. But when they get there, they're handled. So they don't even enjoy it. But then you have people that say what they want and get there whenever they get there. And they have full control, full creative control, can say what they want and do what they want and get paid for it. <coughs> so think about it. You can, you can change all of that around if you just start talking and saying what you want. Um, and I've seen, like, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube that are holding back and trying to be politically correct and trying to please everyone and trying to, you know, do, and that's perfectly fine when you first start. But once you get your, you know, once you get going and speaking, you can't let that hold you back. You can't let that be in your way. Because if it is, then you're not helping nobody and you're not even helping yourself. Okay. Okay. You said you like to tell. Okay, I don't believe in, I don't believe in going to therapy because I'm smarter than the therapist. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, if you smarter than the therapist, why are you there, baby? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Like I can't go to a therapist because I they be laying on the couch while I be sitting up there tell, telling them what to do. So some people are too smart to go to therapists. Some people need a therapist, but some people are beyond a therapist. So it's not that I don't believe in therapy. It's just I'm smarter than the therapist. <laughs> I'll be they therapist. Like, girl, for real? Yes, I didn't know that. I'm going to try that. Yes, I know. You know, transmute that, do this, do that. Because in therapy, uh, do they, I mean, in school for therapy, do they teach you alchemy? Do they teach you transmutation? Do they teach you frequency? Do, I mean, they don't teach you all of that. That's something that you're going to have to learn and look for yourself and get experience with. I mean, psychology is one thing, but alchemy is another thing. You're listening while you do your aerobics, transmuting my mind and body. Thank you. Yeah, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, Evolving Goddess. Pre appreciate you. Um, I think they just listen. Okay, yeah. I don't, I don't need to tell my business to people <laughs> and pay them. They're going to pay me to get my business. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> if you want me to tell you my business, then you pay me. <laughs> Uh, look like you on background. Yes, thank you. But, you know, to each their own, do what you feel is best for you. Okay, you think the digital footprint made all of us paranoid like Justin Bieber and Haley Bieber situation? What do you say might be used against you? My digital footprint, I don't care. You can't use anything against me. If I put it there, I wanted it there. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You know what I'm saying? And I can always transmute it, deny it, laugh about it and say, yeah, I did that. And what you going to do? You know, so pff, I don't care enough to care about a digital footprint. If I If I put it down, then it's down. You know, so who cares? And, you know, a lot of times people can fake creating fake conversations that look like you wrote something, you know, so you can't even tell what's real and what's fake nowadays. So you better figure out how to get paid off of it either way. Okay. Okay. You better figure out how to get paid off of either way. Okay, is all it is is fuel to your money, whatever it is. Just think of it like that. You better get paid off of it either way, if it's fake or if it's real. That's my that's my advice. You said keeping a diary is the same thing as having a therapist. I don't know. I think it allows you to get your uh, feelings or what you think or your thoughts out on paper. And you can always go back and look where you were at a certain time. See how you were thinking. All right. What's your thoughts on, I don't even know who that is, baby. Uh, oh, oh, the Supernatural book. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh, too wordy. I mean, it's good. But 
overly complicated, but still good. I mean, I, I understand it, but for the, you know, for some people, they might need to get my book and stay it because it's easier to explain. <laughs> Uh, it's very good, though. It, it does say, you know, becoming new supernatural, becoming the divine. It gives you all the science and psychology and stuff behind it. It's very wordy, but it has charts and graphs in it. I do recommend it. But if you don't like overcomplicated reading, just get my book, How to Manifest. This is basically the same thing with simpler terms. Uh, becoming supernatural, becoming source, becoming divine. Uh You said got that fire in her soul. Uh. Okay, and I'm going to end it with this. Uh, if people are saying, um, oh, you've changed. Oh, you think you're all that or you need to be more humble. Why are they trying to control you doing what you do? <laughs> think about it like that. Okay, why do you care? Why are you trying to control who I am? You don't have any authority over me. So therefore, if you don't like the person that I am, dismiss yourself from my presence. That's how you deal with that. What's the tea about twin flames? Twin flames, eh, term of endearment. Um, I don't really get into that because I don't look outside of myself for answers. You know what I'm saying? So that's just some, a concept that if you believe in it, you believe in it. And if you don't, you don't. All right. I think it's another way to create codependence on someone or something and to divide yourself from yourself. It's, it's you know, I, I believe it's a, a technique to create a duality within yourself versus unification and deification of yourself. So whatever you choose to believe, that's that's the path you've taken and that's what you're thinking. And it's easier to get back to yourself if you don't look outside of self for completion, okay? If you are source, if you are all, if you are everything, then everybody's your twin flame, your quadruplet frame, your octuplet frame, I mean flame, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> The big flame, a giant flame. There you go. Everybody the flame. <laughs> okay. So just think of it like that. It's like, don't be going out looking for one person because some dusty hotel can come up to you and say, I'm your twin flame. You better believe me. So I can get some free ramen noodles and sleep on your couch this winter. <laughs> Girl, that's my twin flame. I can't kick him out. I got to pay his bills. You know, a lot of Dusties trick women into believing that they're, they're twin flame so they can get free food and shelter. So watch out. <laughs> ah. Watch out for the twin flame uh, scam, baby. All right, I'm going I'm to I'm leave y'all with that one so y'all can laugh. I will see y'all on the next one. Thank you guys, everybody who donated. Thank you to all the members that are here. People love love, so, that's, so that is dependency. Exactly. Love yourself, and, and that's good enough, okay? Love yourself, that's good enough. Are you looking for somebody else to love you? That's also seeking validation. If people don't love you naturally and you got to go out and look for it, that's an issue. That's an issue. So when you love yourself, you vibrate self-love and then people can say, okay, you know what? I'm feeling the vibe of love within you. So that therefore they love you naturally. You don't got to go and look for it. Okay. Uh-oh, Lulu. Thanks for being a member. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Bye.